Everything on this platform originated as public information. We discuss it here after it becomes public somewhere else. Once, what in the world is that a mistake? Once it's public, I discuss it and get to looking into it. And no one is exempt. Listen to me, nobody, nobody, nobody is exempt. If you or yours put it out, then I will commentate on it. And there's nothing you can do about it. All right, let's get started. All right, welcome to Larry Live. Make sure you let everybody know that we are on. It's a Monday night. Every Monday night we are here. You can always catch us here every Monday night at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will always be here. Unless it's a holiday or something. I, if it's something that ain't going to be here, I'll tell you before the, the Monday come. But in a certain way. So tonight is trending topics. What does that mean? Trending topics mean the last few posts over the last few days. Y'all been arguing and arguing, thousands of you. And so we're going to talk about it here. You're going to finally find out what I think about it. Because when I post it nine times out of ten, I won't say what I think about it. Open up the lines and let you call in and tell me what you think about it. And then after trend, trending topics, one of the trending topics that we have seen over the past week is George Bloomer. I call him Skinty George. Do you have the picture when he was fat? Put that in there, because I'm going to need that just for a laugh. And that's no, that's no hate to fat people, because we, we love fat and fluffy. We all come in different sizes. I'm, all my whole family is fat and fluffy. Hell, I'm sitting here in this chair with a little piece of fluff and, and, and fat around in some areas that I need to get rid of. I'm bigger now than I've ever been before. I know some of you see me in person, like, oh, my God, I thought you were bigger than that. But I'm big for 6'2". For 6'2", I ain't got no business being the weight that I am that I ain't going to call out right here on this show. I'm the biggest I ever been, and I just feel fat and just wrong. <laughs> but I can't stop eating. <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't get high, but food? <laughs> Good God, my master. I love, uh, some, some, I love spaghetti. I love our, uh, um, I love pizza. That's my absolute favorite and fried chicken right by. And I just, I just can't help myself. I love to just sit, sit away. Uh, sit away, shut away, go uh, turn the TV on, something real good that I just love. It can be, I've watched it 50 times. Put that on and with something good to eat in front of me. But anyway, see if you can find that picture where it's him fluffy as he can be. If you can't find it, that's all right. I'm going to go ahead with the show in a darn way. But George Bloomer, skin Ted George Bloomer, and the allegation that we have seen on the internet, some of you probably have not seen it, and I'm very well aware, thousands of you probably don't know what I'm talking about right now. But you're going to know by the end of the show. It's going to be good tonight, and I ain't going to try to tell you how quick I'm going to try to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and do my best in, uh, in, in doing it in real quick and fast as possible because I know there are a whole lot of stuff that you got to get done on this Monday night before you go to bed to get ready for your Tuesday day. Um, you got stuff you got to do on Tuesday and stuff, okay? So I do understand that. All right, did you find a picture of him, Fluffy? It ain't him? Ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm about to show you right now. It may take your breath a little bit because you may, may have never seen skinty George Bloomers in this way. But this is when he was fluffy. Here we go. That's the witchcraft in the pews. Just out of Johnny Washington Church. This is the sending everybody to hell. Everything you do and think is wrong. George Bloomer. Look at him, look mean as the devil. But this right here is the new and improved George Bloomers right here. 
I done sided up what's taking so long. There he is. That's the new emperor. That's the skinty George Bloomers. The former house nigga of Kevin Adele and the Plantation Network, formerly known as the Word Network. This white man, Jewish man right here. That did not have no problem. You need to put that in here. With doodling at his version of the blackface for a, what he said is a joke. But by this time, George Bloomers had done told 159 times, do not do this, stop this, this is not good, this is offensive to me, offensive to my people, offensive to everybody on this network. He just kept on, kept on, kept on. George Bloomers did not know, skinty George Bloomers did not know that at that time there had been so many um, accusations of concerning racism and all that kind of stuff. But all that came out since I started covering the story. And because I broke the story, he came here along with Bishop Bernard Jordan set side by side. You got to go back and watch that video. And we talked about that right here on the show. And LRL called for the boycott. And they took it somewhere else. Not skinted George Bloom. Okay, but let's go get back to the screen then. You got to keep interrupting me. Um, get uh, See how what you done did? Let me be. Just don't talk to me. Let me talk to you. Don't say nothing back. I know, but you don't got to tell me I can't find it. Just not, just be where you can't find it in the silence. Can you say it in the silence? Say it to yourself. Can y'all give Kendall Heifer Ida a hand clap of praise in all the comments? Just do the hand clap emoji so he understand that I do appreciate him. Hence, I pay him. And hence, I have now hired him as a 100% personal assistant. But the, there are three letters in the first word assistant that he specialized in. That is A S to the S. All right, get this white man off my screen. This is black show. All right, uh, let me get started. <laughs> I'm just playing. We got white followers who I absolutely love as well and support this platform. Okay, are you ready? What's this you got in front of me? Take it now. Take it now. <sighs> I tell you the truth, you, you, you twist up my spirit. What in the world? Have you prayed today? Let me take this gum out of my face. I ain't got no ADHD. Yeah, go. I was, excuse me, I ain't supposed to be saying that word on live air. Okay, Jesus, lamb. Word me to death. I'm trying to get my children to, to not... Be, to do Russ right and, and not say nigga all the time like the daddy. And there I am spitting it out every time I turn around. The N word, N word. I'm going to do better. But since I'm on the YouTube erasure and Facebook, and I can do whatever I want to do. But when, I, when you book me for shows, those of you that are watching, when you book me for shows, I know how to act. Now, Kendall, let me be so I can put on the um, at do white right for the show, okay? All right, let me get started. First off, let me say this. I want to remind each and every one of you that are watching, this show does not happen just out the ether. It takes a whole lot of money to do this show, and I am still in litigation. I know you tired of it, but it's just what the truth is. I still am. And I'm pretty sure some of you have been following everything online. This is what I need for you to do. If you like the show and you're not a patron, if you're a patron, you're already on your $12 every month. But the rest of y'all that get it, get, just tune in and you don't support every month. Okay, take a moment right now and hit. Oh, you, you can become a patron. You can do that. Or you can support. And remind me, Kendall, to do this midway of the show again, okay? All right, so I sponsored, well, I'm, I'm not going to say I because that's not true. The LRL brand, which y'all know is the MBN Network, that's the parent company sponsored war leap of you guys to go and watch this movie you're supposed to take your hips to the movie house and watch this picture show and the name of it is just mercy It's starring michael b jordan jamie fox and brie larson and i gave you exclusive footage last week to really sort of prime your pump so you will feel like going and watching it and it was a great show. Also had Bishop Bernard Jordan to come in because he wrote a book. This is all about injustice. And the injustice that I mentioned at the top of the show 
between Kevin Adele and Skinty George Bloomer, Bishop Jordan wrote a book by the name of America's Original Sin. He said it is racism. I like to say that it is slavery. We saying the same thing. And it's absolutely free. And it's for LRLers to read. That's for every darn body. So you'll be able to give this link to everybody. Let me take a moment right here and put it inside the show. Because last time I put the wrong link in there. And there's a special link that you got to click for LRLers to go and read this. You can read it tonight. I think it's around 100 pages. Well, if you're not used to reading, you can read it this week. But here, I mean, put this in here. And I've heard some of you already say this. It's awesome. You halfway through it. He documents everything and give a lot of backdrop concerning this whole ordeal concerning the Plantation Network formerly known as the Word Network. And some of y'all are still watching it. I see some of y'all still going up there. And that's what you want to do? Okay, then. But I do want you to know that you're going on a network where the owner has insulted your blackness and your black money and has challenged black dignity. And I think that you need to continue the boycott and the protest, the actual protest boycott with signs and all. They haven't done one now in about two or three weeks, so I'm pretty sure one is coming up really soon because this shall not be let go. Uh Uh-huh. And so just mercy is about an injustice as it relates to our people. Here we have death row in our country And no other race is killed more through death row than us. Uh Uh-huh. Now, we ain't the only ones getting killed up there. But more of us are killed. And rightfully so, more of us are in the prisons. I would dare to say it's sort of like the 2020 version of slavery. Mixed in with a little bit of justice. (laughs) But when it comes to us, what you saying? I don't want you to say nothing else. But then once you copy, you, you saw me put it in there. You should have copied it in there. Every once in a while you put it in there. Let me be so I can do this show. Jesus Christ. You don't understand that? You was fucking it up. Shut up. Shut up. Thank you. you I put, got you in there. You can pin it. Let me be now. <sighs> you get off my windshield. I can't see nothing. <sighs> All right, now, so this is about in just now. This th- I'm going to go ahead. T- I went and watched the movie I done again. Um, this time when I went with family t- and friends. Now, I don't pay for, excuse me, I didn't. MBN Network has paid for a whole lot of you guys. The LRL platform, you have been sponsored, many of you. Now, I'm not sponsoring nobody else. I see all the emails, but ain't no more money. There was a lot of certain amount of money that's done going now. So we got we got to pay these lawyers and everything else. I got to pay Nancy and do all of this stuff. All right. So, and then I got to build out the basement in this place that I'm moving into because then I'll be able to receive my guests and everything in there like, like T.S. Madison got going on in her basement. So I got my stuff secure so I can do all that. I can't, so what now? Kendall, you got one more time to say something. Don't talk no more. What in the world? It's just so talkative. You're chit chatty. Why you so chit chatty? Thank you. Don't a word, please. Y'all can't hear him, but I can hear you. He said, ain't gonna say another word. I pray to God. I pray to God. Jesus, lamb, you're so chit chatty. <sighs> All right. Now. Let me tell you where I first got drawn into this movie. Now, we've already done 10.8 million, but there's a second week. And just like it is in music business, it's the same way in movie and in TV business. The four, first four episodes or the four f- first four weeks are extremely important. So we need to be doing very well. Number four now, even beat out Tiffany Haddish movie. Number four now, we need to stay in the top five for the next three weeks. So every black and brown person you know, first you tell them, go get your ticket, get your tailor down there to the movie house and watch the picture show. And then all of your other friends as other races, you tell them too. 
But you tell them make sure they go with some brown folk just in case something pop off in that movie theater because there's some parts of this movie that make you feel pop offish. It make you want to just find somebody that's, that's not your color and be like, you know what? Until they get to the part in the scene where Brie Larson come in and you see that all white people are not our enemy. That a lot of them are our allies. And they understand that they, whether they're rich or poor, they understand that their white skin gives them a privilege. It may not be a financial one. It may just be one when they get stopped by the cops. It may just be one when they're seen by the judge. It may just be one because they might not have no money, but they can go to somebody in their family that have some money or own the business. You know, we don't come from business owners. We, we, things won't set up systemically for black people to own anything. You know, when they gave us the land, they treated us, got it all back, you know. So a lot of white people understand this. And so they are allies to our causes. And I really want to, a lot of black people to really get rid, first of all, of the, of the whatever that thing is that happened and all that that thing is that happened as a result of slavery, what we do to each other. But then when it comes to our other brothers and sisters, to at least be in a kind of relationship where you, they can learn about you and you can learn about them and realize that they are not your enemy, that we are all human beings and we got humanity in common and that blood that bleeds and that we can help each other when it comes to our causes that affect humanity and that affect black people in America who were property. And, and I, I love the way Harriet Tubman done came out, this movie done came out, there's some other things. And I, I'm telling you, if you're a black person, take your hips down there to the Alabama, to the Montgomery, and they say the one in Birmingham, there's certain stuff you need to see with your eyes. And also white Americans. Because, and, there was, and the place when I went, there was more white people than black people. Getting educated about the history of this country, because now more than ever, it is affecting our world. It really is. It's affecting perceptions, lenses, are all, have all been shaped by racism and by injustice. And it is something that we really need to take time to sit in, although it's painful, to sit in it, work through that pain, get educated by that pain, and then rise up with a different dignity. And black people rising up in their dignity and becoming the influencers and the affluent in the society will not trouble anyone. Because, let me tell you why. Because a black man who has suffered like Jesus did on that cross understands that them becoming who they were meant to become means that they pull an entire people out and there is no racism and there is no prejudice in that type of energy. So a black man coming into his proper place is good for the whole of humanity. It has to be. Because we really have not seen it since Jesus. But anyway, let me not get off on that. But anyway, make sure you take your hips to the movie house. And watch the picture. So what you're supposed to do now? Take your hips to the movie house and watch the picture show. What you're supposed to do now? Take your hips. Take your wide hips to the movie house and watch this here picture show called Just Mercy. All right. That's that. All right, let's get on to the next thing. Let's get into the trending topic, the first trending topic. Now, let me tell you this right here that whoa, my whole nerve. Do y'all know Hello, It's Me? Y'all know who that is? Put Hello, It's Me up. This is Hello, It's Me. Now, that's what I call her, Hello, It's Me. Now, you may know her by Adele, but I didn't know Adele from it. For, I didn't know who she was, but I heard Hello, it's me. I was wondering if after all these years you liked to me to go over Earth thing. 
They say that time's supposed to heal you, but I ain't done much healing. Hello, can you hear me? How are you? I'm in California dreaming about the way it used to be when we were younger and free. Ba -da -da. Hello from the other side. I thought you said it a thousand times to tell you I'm sorry for everything that you've done. And Doesn't tear you apart anymore. <laughs> Y'all know that song. Hell, how is you? I'm telling you, when that song came out, I couldn't get it out of my head. So that's it. She became um, Hello Is Me. So, Hello Is Me. Can you blow this picture up? Okay, now we're going to blow this picture up, but hello, it's me. And we're going to have the conversation that y'all been having on the internet. Now, she put this picture up, you know, because she got married after she blew up. I, mean, I hate when women do this to themselves. She found her little piece of man, got with this man after she done blowed up, and it just didn't really work out. So she began a weight loss journey near the, the middle end of their relationship. So this is where she at right now. She done lost a whole lot of weight. You can see her cheekbones. You can see her collarbone. And then you can, her chest meat. Now, let's talk about her chest meat. Now, her breast, this is. Now, let me, let me say this, because I don't think she wearing no bra. So her chest meat, I mean, it looked like. But it's because there ain't no bra to, to sot it up. And you know, it take a little while for that skin to tighten back up after you done lost it. So she probably got to go have another surgery to get rid of that skin. But I don't know if she was really that big. She was just fluffy. She wasn't really that big. But I guess she, I don't know, it could be diabetes, some other stuff that the weight was doing to her knees, to her ankles or something. She said, I, I just got to get rid of this. So she did. And now, hello, it's me. I, I think... Now, y'all might not agree with me. I don't think this is bad. Just, I don't think this is bad. Is this bad to you, Nancy? No, I think she looks good. I think she looks good. Now, the chest meat droop down in line. The chest meat droop down there like that, like down there like mm -mm. She needs to sit up. She sit up a little bit because she's sort of been like that. I don't know why she made that pose. If she got something in her hand, maybe she's carrying something. She looked like she had a cookout. We know white people don't have cookout. They have tailgate parties. So she looked like she had a tailgate party carrying up a, a bin of hot dogs. And they said, smile. Hello, it's me. And she said, huh? And with the hot dogs in her hand. That's probably what happened. There's some hot dogs she carrying, so she slumped over like that. And there's just a bad picture that she never put on the internet with her chest meat down there like droop down there like that. It was just not just not good to do. All right, so that's that. Since we are talking about white people, let's talk about another white person that's married to a black woman that got on the internet and made a statement that she's getting dragged across the internet concerning. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a black woman. I said married to a black woman. I'm talking about Lonnie. Married to a black woman. Oh, Lord, that's boy. That's $5, because that's too many times now. This black woman, Lonnie, she owned The Real. Y'all ever, The Real was what Tamar was on. She sat out there. She's sitting up there with our, uh, um, one of them twins, Adrian, Tamara, and who? Jean, Jeannie Ma, I like a mama. Okay, so that was something up there, and she had made a statement, and it's on the page, and I posted on the page, and y'all went crazy about it, like y'all did about this Adele picture, y'all went fussing back and forward. This is the statement that she made. She said, black men that are in power, that have wealth and have money, a lot of them, not all of them. She said a lot of, or many black men, they don't know how to have wealth and power and then treat a black woman right. 
Okay, now let's explore this, this kind of thinking for a little bit. This is the first thing that came to my mind. Bitch, please. It's the first thing that came to my mind. I said, damn, what you talking about? Mm-mm. You must, you must be a bitch. And that's why these black men ain't doing right by you because you, you just run your mouth. You want them to talk and then get, black men got a limit. They don't want no mama. They want a, a, a lover. They don't want no mama. Not in that sense, try to tell them what to do. And maybe that's what you is. And then I begin to explore a little piece because I know she had this white man. And so then I begin to explore a little piece and then I say, you know what? what probably what it is is that her experience then whenever she tried to date wealthy black men, it always ended up wrong. And because it always ended up wrong, now she feel like that that's just the case across the board. When that is not the case, Lanti. That's everybody not the same. This has been your experience. Some black man knows how to treat their black woman. And they got money and they got power. Now, let me say this. Because of that thing that is systemic in our world, you you give a black man a little piece of money and they go out their mind. Oh my God, they put every dime they got on their back. Every dime they got in a car. If if they get it, they're going to broadcast it. You're going to know it. They're going to be flashing it. You know, it's just, I don't know. So I understand the world of thought she's coming from possibly because I have seen a lot of black men, once they get successful, get drunk on power, get drunk on money, and start running through women, calling them bitches and calling them whores, you know, meaning that they can use them for whatever they want to use them, not because they're really acting like a bitch or acting like a whore. It's just because, you know, they just look at them as somebody they can rummage through the puss. You know, so I do understand that because I have seen that. But Tom, all successful, powerful black men are not the same. Now, you guys know that there is some kind of parallel between power, money and the black man. Look at the rappers. Huh? Look at the actors. Huh? Look at the preachers and the pastors. So you know there's some there's there's some parallel that she she ain't just coming out the side of her neck, but there's something to what she's saying. This is coming from a world that we can all this world the world of thought that this comment is coming from is definitely coming from something we we can't act like don't exist. We can't be like oh no you tripping that's just you shouldn't put everybody in the same category. Now wait, it's a little bit more than that because we do see a certain kind of pattern. We do. And that's why in them comments, y'all were fighting like cats and dogs. Some of you guys saying, oh, she right. And then somebody, why you say she right for? Because that's my experience. Look at them giving all these examples. Well, you know, they, they, for every bad example, there's a good example. Larry Reed. Oh, Obama. Now, all y'all women like Obama. Who else? Uh, Bill. C uh, Eddie. M mm -mm, nope. Uh, LL Cool J. There you go. Look at that. So for every bad one, there's a good example. What you talking about? That ain't all of us out here doing that. We ain't rummaging through uh, through the women's puss and, you know, and fondling their chest meat, then throwing them out there and then go picking up another one. And uh, but that ain't, we ain't, all of us is not doing that. Some of us have had good mamas and had great relationship with those good mamas. And so we respect women. All of us ain't the same. Don't be doing that. We're putting out there like that long. You got to be careful. You got to quantify and qualify what you say about your mouth. Quit making these blanket statements. And truth be told, a statement won't really blanket, but it just got buried in her statement where she said some. Because she did say some or a lot. No, she said a lot. That was her statement, a lot. So everybody really didn't listen to her because she, it, it, she wasn't speaking for all black men. So we sorry, Lonnie, for just taking your words and running with them. All right, next topic.
Now, since we talk, we still get white people's in every topic. See, this is I love when we have balanced shows like this because sometimes this will become just a, just nothing but black folk, and they all you know I know it's mainly black folk, but I wanted to mix some other folk in there because we got all different kind of followers. Ah, let's go over there to England and talk about them because they they got some stuff going on over there. Ladies and gentlemen, did you see the picture of the queen that hit the internet? First of all, let me say this: that the queen. Somebody need to talk to her and, and, and tell she has resting face. Let, can you make that bigger? Why she's so small? We got all that space to take up. Make it a little bigger. Just a little bit bigger on the side. You ain't got to do it like that. Well, go ahead, Nancy. Do it the way you want to do it. It's your, 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 it's your show. This child got rest face. Every picture I seen, I Google and Google and Google. And every picture I seen, I done got in a hot pink and a hot purple. Every every time her face looked like, I am sick of this. I'm sick and tired. My back is hurting. This diaper is leaking. I am ready to get back to my bedroom for tea and crumpets. I do not want to be out here taking this picture. I'm just a figurehead and I ain't doing shit. Put me back in the castle and put and bring me about four or five of them guards in here tonight for me to play with. <laughs> you talk about changing of the guard. <laughs> I, yeah. Have you ever been to London and watched them go on train? This is so phenomenal. You hear about it all your life and you go and look at it. It's just so beautiful. This woman has resting face, and um, but she's the queen, though. Let me tell you what happened. What's so sad about Diana? What's her name? Princess Diana. It was just horrible. She killed in the accident, but they still don't know whether somebody killed her or was it was a real accident. But anyway, her children are still here, the princess. Prince Harry, you know, he married a black woman. Mm -hmm. She black. And she's from Compton, ain't she? Something like Crenshaw. One of them C's over there in California. She from the hood. But anyway, this girl came up, you know, she used to call into the Wendy show trying to get interviews and stuff. She worked hard trying to get into the limelight, uh, allegedly. So she always wanted to be in a certain, you know, space. And here she is now. She went over there to London and that puss has given her a space in not the White House, but in the castle, the legacy. She is now a prince. Prince, uh, we're actually a duchess. So this is the Duke and the Duchess of Sussex. S-U-S-S-E-X. -S -S -E prince Harry and Princess Meghan. Ain't, ain't she automatically a princess because she married him, but she, they ain't going to use that word. The Dutch. And remember when this first came out, I said, gal, what you need to do is hurry up. Hurry up. And you have socks with that man. And you make sure that he get in your egg. That it gets in your egg. And you pop out a little baby. And that's what she done. So now this is forever. She will get this check. She will be getting pounds from London for the rest of her life. Until that child probably about around the age of 21. But now she done went and talked and ran her mouth to darn much, and I don't even know what's going to happen now. Now they're out on a limb. Because now the, they done left the, the, the palace, and they're on the way to the Canada saying they want to go and it's be their own entity and, it's, and establish, this is the word, independent wealth. Want in, wealth separate from the London folk over there at the castle with all that money. Old, old money. Old money. I don't know how smart this is. Now, from an entertainment standpoint, this got us talking about them. Of course, they go sit up, side up there in Canada. Canada's a really nice place. If there's, if there's another country that I will go and live in because I'm absolutely an American, it would be Canada. And plus, it's right here close to the U.S. of the eight. The divided states of America, I love the divided states of America. Mm -hmm. With our press, butane, the president, businessman, and entertainment, and all, I still... I'm an American, and I love America. But I would go stay in Canada, you know, if I absolutely had to go somewhere else. Is Canada another country? Lord, I feel like Portia Williams. I don't even know what I'm talking about. It's not a part, <laughs> it's not a part of the United States, but it's, it's right beside us. But when, when you go, it don't feel, it feel like, at the lower part, feel like you're still in upstate New York. 
You don't stop feeling like somewhere else to get way over there and up in there in it. Or the Ontario. Then you start feeling like you're in somewhere else. But then this that sort of sort of feel like the uh, islands. Yeah, okay. All right, yeah. <clears throat> so she's done left over there to the palace, left over there to the castle, she's done left over there to the, all the dignitaries. And she's gonna establish her own thing. They want to get their in independent lit wealth. They are going to build wealth, they're going to build it quickly, but I would have been scared to leave that their palace. We don't know what happened to Diana and why she she is not here on today. So what we're going to do, we're going to pray prayers of protection round about Meghan and Harry, particularly Harry. Because if Harry get taken out, well, she got a baby still, she's going to get some money. But we're going to be um, praying protection round about them because we don't want nothing to happen to him like it happened to his mama because there was some conspiracies around that. So this is what we're going to do. We're going to pray for them right now. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we pray that you will protect Harry and Meghan and the little baby. And God, that you would give them all kind of wealth. You would give them all kind of success. But we want you to put a thick coating of the blood of Jesus upon them that nobody can penetrate. Not a bullet, not an arrow. Uh huh. Protect and cover. In Jesus' name, we pray right now. No car wrecks, no plane wrecks, no train wrecks. Nothing put in the food, the poison is in it. Get them alert in their spirit and tell them, spit out! To where they don't end up. And nothing happened to them. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And amen. All right, you're blessed. Go to the next thing. Uh, <clears throat> what's the next topic I want to talk about? We're doing your topics that, that showed up on the what's the name. Here we go. Let's go to this topic here. This sort of connects us to, I'm going to end with the Skinted George Bloomers mm -hmm, recent allegations. I want you to pay attention to what I'm going to say concerning this here story so that I can refer back to it. And then if I forget to refer back to it, at least I've done said it like my mouth. But this is the case concerning Oprah Winfrey's and also Russell Simmons. Now, y'all drag Oprah. And she's, a, she's, she's like one of our black icons. <laughs> I ain't seen no draggish like that of Oprah ever in my life in these comments. After I get off this show, go back and look. Did, did Up on a this here post that I made on the Facebook page and in the YouTube community and Twittered, y'all went ham on Oprah. And you may be watching and say, why are they talking about Oprah? Why are they mad with her? I'm going to tell you as soon as I come back from this break. When I come back, I'm going to tell you what's going on. And we're going to finish the rest of this show. And coming up, I'm going to talk about the allegations concerning George Bloomer. You do not want to miss that. I'll be right back. Are you in need of direction for a decision you have to make? Maybe you're curious about the future. If that's you, the founders of Zoe Ministries and the Company of Prophets are offering you free prophecy. Call 888-831-0434. Don't wait. Call 888-831-0434. Do it today. Celestial Tax Service provides excellent tax preparation for the local DMV and all 50 states all year round. Here at Celestial Tax Service, we can assist you with tax preparation, accounting, and credit repair. We go above and beyond for our customers and we assist you throughout the year with your current and past tax needs. If you want your taxes done with quality work and personal care and you're looking for new beginnings for your credit history, contact Celestial Tax Services today. For further information or to get services, visit our website at www.celestialtaxservice.org and print out our company credit report or a tax preparation application and email it or fax it in to us and we'll get you started. All right, make sure those of you that are about to file tax and instead of going to Jackson Hewitt and going to H&R Block trying to hear and get your money back, you can actually go to Celestial Tax. Make sure you contact them and you can get a discount if you are an LRL. -er. The discount promo is Paper Bible Saved. Make sure. Y'all don't pay 
I ain't gonna explain paper balance to say it would take too much time. But make sure you are using that code so you can get a discount. And those of you that want or need personal prophecy, if you want to get connected to a band of prophets concerning your future and your life choices, make sure you call or sign up at bishopjordan.com or call that number that just played that I have not remembered. I don't remember. You have to look at rewind and look at it. <laughs> Some of you would ask me about this conference that is going on here in Atlanta for pastors that have different struggles with pornography or alcoholism. All of these pastors are coming together to have a panel. It's going to be very interesting. I'm going to play that video right before I start taking calls. So make sure you have a pen, a paper handy, or your cell phone to write down that information because some of you have been asking me about it. Now let's get back to Oprah and to Russell Simmons. The reason why you guys dragged her in the comments. Let me tell you about this story. Well, you know, Oprah had, she always been an advocate when it comes to victims using their voice, this goes back to 25 years of her doing the Oprah Winfrey show. Just come on um, every day, five days a week at 4 p.m. On, on the East Coast here. And she always bounced around doing stories, whether the, the victim was beat upside the head by their husband, whether they were molested, whether they were raped. She always have been a voice for people that have that kind of going on for the victims to lift their voice, use their voice, and tell their story, hopefully, with the hopes, and she always said this, with the hopes that they would um, tell their story in such a way to where if there is someone out there that's being abused or somebody who's thinking about abusing somebody, that will stop that whole cycle of sameness. That has been something that Oprah Winfrey has been connected to for umpteen years. And she has a soft spot for it. You know, that's Tyler Perry went out there and talked about him being molested. There was a whole studio full of men. All of them men were crying, rough, you know, strong men. Some a little bit of soft, you know, because sometimes I happen to believe that when you are molested, you do go through some kind of battle or rape. You go through some kind of battle with, you know, what's going on in your sexuality. I think it at least opens you up to the possibility of having sex a way different than what you possibly was doing it prior to or felt as though you were supposed to do it prior to or that you naturally had uh, inclination towards the opposite sex prior. But once you are molested or played with or touched by the same sex, it does introduce to you the idea or the experiential knowledge that you can come or nut an entirely different way. It just is what it is. You know, so, um, what, did, did I, what did I just say? Can you remind me that I'm on this camera? Because I'm talking like I'm talking to y'all in the back room. Okay, well, just stop me. Just get a buzzard. Get a, you got a buzzard. <laughs> Wait. I wish y'all could have heard. What, do that again, Nancy. <laughs> There's something wrong with you. <laughs> Lou Dessa must have been drinking. What is wrong with you? He's to my aunt. <laughs> Don't get one of them horns. Okay, wait a minute. So, it was said, you've seen, the whole Me Too movement has brought the naughty daughter and every darn body into question. If folk had lost jobs, white men, brown men, everybody had lost jobs because folk come back to my <laughs> I remember 30 years ago, you kissed me on my cheek. You know, all the different kind of stuff. Now, and I said this in 2016 when I had my co-host up here, but we first started talking about this Me Too thing, and every week we talk about somebody that lost their job. I said we got to watch this whole Me Too thing because some of these folk is lying. Let's put it plain and simple. Some of these folk is lying. They're trying to get a payday. They're trying to get recognition. They're trying to get on hot topics. They're trying to, you know, start some kind of platform, some kind of foundation. Money. Well, when the accusations came towards Russell Simmons, now I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all this. In the industry, there have been rumors for years concerning Russell Simmons and his love for the women's. Now, always been speculation that in order for people to, for women to be on the come up in Hollywood or in entertainment business, in order for them to, to come up, they have to let people come. Mm -hmm. Lay on the back, let throw them legs up, and let God use, uh, well, let others use, not God. Let others use what God has given unto you in your soft middle part. Rummage through there, get your, your play right, get your, your money, get your apartment, get your house, that kind of going on. It's been going on for sex is the oldest form of currency. 
It just is. And so a whole lot of people, it's a great negotiation too. And so that has been speculated concerning Russell Simmons for years. Well, these women during this re, uh, Me Too movement came up with all this kind of going on. So he done an extensive investigation. He turned over his company, put it in somebody else's name because they felt like he they're going to try to get this money grab and get all his money. You know, he is, you know, the Simmons, you know, they have all the different empires that got their money, you know, and his his former wife, uh, uh, um, uh, Mimosa, Kamora. Kam mm-hmm. His former wife, you know, and um, they got all the money tied up and all the different kind of going on, you know, so he wanted not to bother that. So he turned it over. So if he gets sued, they can't bother the money. And then he hightailed it up out of the country. I don't know if that was in the write-ups. I'm going to say allegedly went out of the country, but I do know some people that was actually there with him. I'm just going to be quiet right now and drink this water and come back to the story. All right, but in a darn way, that's allegedly. But in a darn way... Uh, so I thinking he back now. I don't really know, but um, I do know he was over there. I know he was over there some months ago. I don't know if he back now, but anyway, he made a post on the internet because he found out that Oprah moved from, you know, Oprah done the R. Kelly but Gail interview, then Oprah done the Michael Jackson and she interviewed. But, you know, she took down the Michael Jackson thing because to find out, although everybody was so convinced and heard them emotional stories and cried and stuff, them niggas were lying. They were lying because the stuff ain't lined up. I'm going to tell you something. Tell you something. And then I pastored for 20 years, and I counseled all those years, and I still do some spiritual counseling now. Though I have a master's in counseling, done my 2,500 hours to go and become a licensed therapist, as I've always said, I never did that. But I wanted the rigor of the education so that I can use it in spiritual coaching because I feel like pastors don't go and get the training and so they can't help their people practically and clinically. And I wanted to be able to do that. So that's what I did. And so with that master's degree and also my baby mom, she has hers in marriage and family from Liberty. Mine is from Apex. And um, both accredited colleges then our hours and everything. But we wanted to have the education so we can help the people better when it came to spiritual counseling or pastoral counseling. Into during when. This here now, R. Kelly, Michael Jackson, and now this here. So everybody in the comments was saying, okay, now open like you targeting black men because we all know that Harvey Weinstein is your business partner or was your business partner. And you even talked about how he used to call you when you were doing Oprah Winfrey show during those days and would call you fussing about the topic and who should be on the show. And you got to the place to where you would not answer his phone call no more because you felt like he was very controlling and manipulative. So you would hang up on him. You told us all of that. You got pictures all over the internet, strolled over the internet where we found out that you and Harvey was actually going to these parties and different things together that you really know him how and why and the whole hell and the heaven you have not done no special on him. Huh? So, 50 Cent, Russell Simmons, a whole lot of other black people begin to speak out. Powerful black people begin to say, okay, you are targeting the black man. You're like a public puppet on the strings of white Hollywood to target our black leaders. Go get with Stedman, go in the house and shut up, Oprah. But, what ended up happening, allegedly, that when it came to this documentary, it's after all of that, when it came to this documentary, which did now become, uh, get on the network and get on TV or be a movie or whatever it was going to be, Oprah poured out and she made a statement, and this is what she said. Allegedly, she said she didn't think everything was ready for it to be aired. And so they were going on to, you know, every movie that was first shown at these festivals. I think this is the Sundance Festival, festival first before it even gets to you and us. You know, people got to see the movie, like the movie, giving all kind of ratings and stars. And sometimes that's tied even to the funding of it and all that kind of going on. And so she backed out because she said it was not ready. But Tom, I actually think that she backed out because she won't finish researching and finding out what the truth was because in that post that Russell Simmons made on the IGs, he basically was revealing, look, you know and I know that these girls are lying. And I don't know if he put this in the post, but I remember reading and found out that he'd done extensive different types of tests, almost like what Mariah did on Mary with Medicine when they said she was using crack and then that hair test and all that kind of money she spent for that. It's the same thing that he did. He passed liar... Uh, 
25 hours of lie detector after lie detector after lie detector and say that he was not lying, but the victims will not even do that. They wouldn't even do the lie, de the lie detector test. This was not looking good. And so Opal, I feel like, this is a legend and what I think, she went to go study trying to find out get a research and she couldn't come up with nothing. So she pulled her name off of it. It still may go forward, but liable not to the, to the level it would have if Oprah not tied to it. So now she is finally pulled back. Now, this is what I wanted to say. I heard Dr. Phil say the same thing just the other day. God started sending me stuff just to reassure me. Now, if you follow LRL for a long, 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 long time, you know that the more I do this, the smarter I get and the better I get when it comes to the stories. At this level that I am at now, and I've been at this level for almost for over a year, if I start talking about a story, it will blow up. And if I talk about it, whatever I say, and even sometimes what you guys say on the phone calls, everything that's in the comments, sometimes it can affect what happens in court, what happens in the public court of opinion. It can affect people's money, their job and empire. So now I'm more careful than ever, than ever. When it comes to doing stories, I had to learn when people come to me and talk about something that has happened, it was public, and now they want me to make it public again, and they really tell their story. I said, okay, no, for me to wake this story back up, I got to do a post about it. I do a post about it. Then we get into the story. Now you want to pull the story because all these thousands of people coming after you telling their comments and their opinions, and now you are bothered. Can you pull the story? I'm like, no, I can't use my platform like it's just something that you pick up and you put down. This is something that I have built. I cannot do that. That happened to me a couple of times. I said, okay, I learned that. Then the other time people would come to me with a story and it's all one-sided. And then when I would check the back story on something, I kind of find out that there was another piece of information that I wish I had put in the narrative, but I didn't put into the narrative, you know, and, and, and I wish I could have, uh, but I found it out afterwards. So I learned from that. I won't do that again. And then I've done the entire story, had all the receipts and, ev and everything. And then I, I try to contact the people and I, I moved too quick. They didn't reach back to me quick enough. And the same day I reached out to them, I'd done the story. And then they reached to me the next day. And so I didn't have their narrative in it. I learned so much. So when it comes to doing this type of work, what I think has happened, Oprah needed more time to do more research because she didn't want to have a do-over like she had to do with Neverland. Because she took that down from everything after done that emotional story everybody was talking about and tweeting about. She had to take it down. It's disappeared because the facts did not check out. That's number one. And doing this type of work, if you're a YouTuber and you're a vlogger and you're taking what somebody told you, you have not called that person, you have not checked them with both sides, you have not looked over receipts, you have not looked for more victims to val validate or corroborate, you are a fake, no good vlogger or YouTuber and you do not need to be on the internet talking to nobody because you are nothing but a gossiper, someone who gets on the internet and just talk about whatever you have heard from somewhere doing damage to people's lives. That is not the type of work that LRL does. And Oprah don't want to be responsible for doing that type of work. And Dr. Phil neither. I'm going to put that video up of what he said concerning that. He said, he said the other day, it hit me in my spirit. Second thing, I think the reason why Oprah has stepped out of this. I think she realized she's been emotionally manipulated. Now, those of you that are listening to me, if you have been raped and molested like I have, when somebody start telling a story about rape and molestation or any story where something that is sensitive and very emotional for you or you have had that trauma or that experience and it sort of parallels or connects with something that you have experienced, you hear that and you see it through your lens and you hear it through your, your ear filter and you hear it a certain kind of way and it connects. And in that moment, you feel the real emotions that they are exuding and probably the real emotions that you have dealt with or not dealt with on the inside of you. And it becomes believable. Now, as it relates to the George, the skinty George Bloomer's allegations, when I first heard it, I believe it. And that that's why I believed it when I first heard it because of that. And this is exactly you're moving too slow. This is exactly what happened with, I think, what happened with Oprah. And I think it's always happened. That's how they got her with the Neverland.
That's how they got a manager because she interviewed Michael Jackson, trusted her, and didn't trust nobody else. Let her walk all through the house. Out there in the playground, out there with the monkeys, the lions and, and tigers and bears and everything. Went through the whole candy market and everything. We seen it. No other person he trusted but the Oprah. So for her to turn around and do that story on them boys, she had to believe it. And I think she recognized I, it's possible I am being emotionally manipulated once again through the door of my pain and my trauma experience that is connecting and paralleling with these women. Let me take my emotions out of this. Think professionally and look at my brand. That's what I think. All right, on to the next topic. Oh, Lord Jesus. What's that? Let's talk about this white woman that done went and got hold of this, um, this black man. Now, both of them are athletes. Y'all went ham in this too. Both of them are athletes. And I did ask you a question. I sort of set y'all up for this one here. Because... I told you guys how she asked this man, this young man, she asked this young man to marry her. Now, what I did not say to you guys, which did not make a hill of beans to me, is that he asked her to marry her first. Now, sometimes when you're telling the story, there's certain key things that you need to put on front street because it affects how the narrative and it, 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 you know, and and in this job, sometimes you purposely hold certain things back to create a a story or a talking point. There's nothing wrong with that. There's no deception in that. But in this, I feel like it really doesn't matter because what was getting me is the smile on this nigga, on this excuse me, on this young black man's face, and the way that she's in in the picture, she's in a domineering role. In the picture, she is has the dominant posture. This is after he done said yes to the dress. Got the ring on his finger and showing it. I want to go upside his head or comb it because it's a little nappy as hell. I want to go upside his head. What in the world? And what? You got a puss too? I don't care that you done asked her first. And then this is what made it worse. When you read why, the reason why she asked him, this is my point of view. Y'all done said, y'all, let me get mine out. Y'all done said that all in the comments, let me get mine out. The reason why that she did it, she said she did it because she wanted him to have the same feeling that she had when he asked her to make What? We don't even, have, our emotions ain't the same way as women's. We don't want that. And if your man do want that, I think you need to pull down his drawers and check. That could be an overgrown clitoris and not be a real peen with balls and all. Because ain't we don't emote like that. That is not how it works. Mm -mm. When we say we love you, I love come. It's provision. It's protection. I mean, th that's the extent of our emotions. They don't get all like that. We might cry. We feel like something's going to happen to you or a serious moment, you know, something like that. But no, we're not like that. We're not women. Now, maybe this new generation of millennials, maybe that's what, because they're millennials, maybe that's how they are. Because they do like these new men coming out more emotional. But these same new men that's very emotional, that's fricking a whole lot of women, they got about half the number of men that they've been with too. Y'all women have to check. Because not everybody is, is trisexual. I mean, try anything sexual. And if you're okay with that, ain't nothing wrong with that. But I'm just saying. So this is weird as hell. Why did you, I wish you would. What? Ask me to marry you after I done ask you to marry me. So number done one, you trying to cancel out or balance out or and do tit for tat. And because I asked you, now you want to ask me. It just don't feel right to me. It's crazy and it's stupid. The biblication say, the man that findeth a wife, he findeth a good thing. What that means? That man has to go search for that woman. What that means? If you want to get married, like the old mother say, women, you go and hide so the husband can find you. You out here asking him to marry you. You look crazy to me. Dumb as hell. All right, next topic. 
This here don't want my whole nerves. This man, Reverend Clarence J. Smith. Now, we y'all drugged him, and God knows I did too in the comment section. Now, this, oh, let me tell you what this man done did. Now, listen to the story. This man done told, took, now, the, I wish I had a picture of the church. I didn't put it in this little storefront church. This man done stole umpteen thousands of dollars from the federal government for Monty's to feed hungry children. This man spent $130,000 to buy a Bentley. Took the rest of the money that was buying sneakers and showing up at the church all flossing and bossing. Then somebody got real snoopish and kind of found out that he was getting money to feed the, the children in Chicago and he was not using the money for that. He was only feeding his ego, feeding his love for cars and for sneakers. A pastor now. And name of his church, New Life Impact Church, I think it is. And then also feeding himself. Look at him. Can't you tell he like burgers and such? Ribs and things? Fries and all? Cornbread and succotash? You can look at him and tell he like pork chops. You can look at him and you can tell that he really love uh, uh, white potatoes, that he really like uh, corn on the cob, that he really like pizza, that he really like collars and cabbage. <laughs> he been feeding himself and ain't been feeding the children in the community and went and bought a bit and some sneakers. Pastor, you don't be shaming yourself. Yeah. Cain. Cain. This is pretty shame. I, it's just getting worse and worse and worse. Lord have mercy. Oh, Lord have mercy. Eating and eating and eating and eating and eating and, and the children ain't had nothing to eat. And you look like you ate all the meals. We're not sorry for you. I go to jail and go to hell. Lock them up. Put them up. Oh, Jesus. Get them off my screen. What is that? I ain't got nothing to say about that. Oh, let me tell y'all something. Yeah, bring that over. Ladies and gentlemen, for the first time in history, Sam plan is not true. For the first time in history, I have positive news concerning the Church of Gacy. <clears throat> Excuse me. The church of God in Christ. Now, I've said this 159 times. Yes, I am apostolic. One, one, one. One way to God. One, one, one. One way to God. Oh, one, one, one. One way to God. Baptized in Jesus' name. Oh, there shall be light in the evening tide. The way to glory you will surely find. It's through the waterway. It is the light today. Baptized in Jesus' name. I am apostolic. Raised Baptist, but I'm apostolic. It was Independent Baptist Church. They really spoke in tongues and wore hair covering stuff in the Holy Ghost and prophecy. They don't even, in fact, they don't even count. They were apostolic. But if there was any organization that I would ever think about becoming a part of, it would be now. Mm -mm. I know you thought I would say Church of God in Christ, but that devil is a lie. I ain't getting nobody organization for nothing. But I've always liked the Church of God in Christ, mainly because of the music. You, it, who, the Clark sisters, the Pay sisters, Walter Hawkins and them come up out of there. Kim Barrell is over there. Everybody is over there and, and they come out in the Kojic or either in the Kojic. Or the Kojic is it. It is. So God bless it. And the church that I visit here in the city, Restoration Revival Church of God in Christ. So it's the Church of God in Christ. You know, so I ain't, I'm not hating. Well, it's just, you know. So for the first time in history, I have good news. I'm just playing. It's not really the first time. I'm going to say, no, it's not really the headquarters because that's Mason Temple, but the church of the 
presider over all of the church of God in Christ. Ain't this a beautiful church? Look at it, the beautiful church. Look at the beautiful church. Well, let me put up the post. The post I put up first. And then we show the church. The post says, West Angeles, Church of God in Christ, pastored by the HNIC, that's the head nigga in charge, of the Colgate Church, Bishop Charles Blake burned their mortgage to a $65 million church. That's how much um, um, the Carpenters Church Redemption, that property, that relentless, that um, Baby Jakes and the Adventure guy, it's worth $65 million. $65 million church today with enough money left over. Touch your neighbor and say, God going to give you enough the way you got something left over. <laughs> to build their new family life center. Great accomplishment in today's economy with church attendance at its lowest. If you could pay off anything right now, what would it be? So you guys went up on the day. Y'all started talking about when you pull this post because there's over a thousand likes and stuff now. Okay, this is the church. Look at the church. Ain't that beautiful? Beautiful. That is absolutely beautiful. All them colors make me think about all the people. Red and yellow, black and white. Day is precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Hallelujah. I wonder what I make you think. Put it back up. That's what it made me think about. Oh, red and yellow, black and white. Day is precious in his sight. Jesus loved the little children of the world. Hallelujah. All right. This is what I want to say to all y'all mega churches that you got a whole bunch of money, got a whole little bunch of, bunch of people that's coming in there and giving up their money. Pay off your darn buildings quick so you don't end up in those situations. You know, where you are, uh, like a whole bunch of churches I've been posting on my on my timeline this whole year that is losing their whole church and ain't got no monies. Uh-huh. They told me that um, Charles Blake, it got a, he's a businessman. So I think they sold a property, liquidated it, paid off this, paid off that, just getting out of debt. I don't know what these pastors be thinking about. Y'all pay off these churches. Y'all go build these big empires unto yourself. Go ahead and pay them things off. Jesus, Lamb. Lamb of God. Pay it off. Pay it off. Since we're talking about paying off expensive property, let's go ahead and talk about the Carpenters and the Grace. First, bring the Carpenters over. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce to you Ronald Carpenter and Hopeful Carpenter. They turned over their church redemption in Green River, North Carolina to the Grays. That would be John, Baby Jake's Gray, and also Aventer, the Avenger Gray. And it seems as though since the day that they gave them this alleged, what we thought was a golden key, possibly still could be one, possibly could not. According to the Greys, it ain't. According to the Carpenters, it was. Gave them this golden key last year, last May, 2000, no, it wasn't last year, it was 2018, wasn't it? Yeah, 2018 when they gave them over this, this um, golden key to take over this property. <sighs> from that day to this one has been one story after the next coming up out of there now that John has his pain under control and this very emotional broken little 8 year old boy that was left on the front lawn somewhere to keep talking to the women that ain't his wife he done got all that healed up allegedly I hope pray to God he do because I do not want to have to come up here and do another John Gray baby Jake story but I will do one if one of your hoes contact me you know they like to come to me and I had two or three of them come to me so you best not never do nothing else. Listen to whatever the, uh, listen, Marvel, at, by way of God, has given you an avenger. You are married to a whole agent of shield. <laughs> you, what? Listen to your wife. She told you not to go over there, shake hands with the press, Bhutan, and knew the picture, the opportunity was going to come and folk going to drag you. That happened. She told you not to be paying attention from the women from the college and why they was here in the land of the girl. That happened. Getting that money all the time, trying to help folk. God bless you with the money. It's your money. Don't be giving the folk. Oh, have mercy. Jesus. Listen to your avenger, Jesus Lamb. Listen to her. 
Then why you think she's snatching that mic out your hand every time y'all get up there and take over the service and be strong in her own? Thank you, John. Ah, oh, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Lift your hands and give God praise and God done it. But have y'all noticed? Because we used to talk about her being strong and wrong. Y'all notice this, this, my spiritualizations down there doing like this. Just giving me the data. I think. Cause she ain't been doing that much. He wait for she he, she wait for him to hand her the mic, or or if she get in the mic, her tone is different. I think this woman is tired. I think she love her husband. I think she love her children. I think she love the church. I think she love the th the things that God has given her to do. But all this kind of going on, I don't think she signed up for all of that. She's like, baby, look, just let me go somewhere. That's probably the one that church the other Sunday out there on that yacht chilling. With what's the name them? Tyrese. Is that his wife? Tyrese the one that got the um what's that he got in the backyard? A uh, Hagen Dodge or something. A coffee shop, something he got in his backyard. Uh <clears throat> on this property. That's why she wanted to go chill and was happy about it. Y'all go look on her IG. She looked good. She's got the picture of down hair blown away. She actually is looking good. It's like she's and hey, you think she's getting work done? I don't know, but whatever she's getting done is working for her. But anyway, she look at, like Demetri looking better and better and better. Okay, so all this stuff that went on. So the last latest thing that happened, I report, reported, of course, I received this information first. See what happens. Like I said at the top of the show, if you are in privacies, Larry, I'm gonna talk about you, but once you mess leak out in the publications, you get on my show one time. I stay on you. I stay you the topic forever. So anything that come out, I'm going to talk about. And because this was a breaking story, they came straight back to me. Who is they? You'll never know. <laughs> they came to me to tell me about what was going on. So I put it out and then all the other outlets picked it up. Now these other outlets, I guess they done paid somebody to give them the information before I get it or just as soon as I get it. But I don't care. Because everybody know it was a Larry Reed live birtheration. <clears throat> anyway, I posted this the other day. Y'all went crazy up on the comment. Let's bring it over so I can read it. I can't see that. What in the whole hell and the heaven have you done? Did you make the screen smaller? What in the world? I can't see. Oh, Lord have mercy. We already seen the picture. Make the, the typing bigger so I can see. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Ron Ron and Carpenter and Hope Hope for Carpenter have released this statement. Redemption is unable to continue to absorb the mountain debts and past due accounts associated with the Green Real property during relentless ten tenancy and therefore has no other option but to seek to regain possession of the property sooner than sooner, sooner rather than later. Allegedly, the court has granted them, this is me talking now, allegedly the court has granted them a January the 31st date to finalize the eviction of John Baby Jakes and Aven Aventur the Avenger Green and their church relentless. I wonder... Will they be gone by then or do they plan to stay until it's convenient for them to leave? Being that they are alleging that they are in compliance. Now, this is the whole thing. I read both lawyers' letters. I've been posting every time the representatives from the Grays um, send me something or representatives from the um, Redemption send me something, meaning the people that are doing their public statements that, you know, get into these things. Every time I do do that, nothing is... I don't know if i ever seen a story that's so opposite. One side saying one thing, another side saying another side. They ain't even saying the same stuff. It's like, what in the whole hell and the heaven is really going on? How in the world? Wait a minute, who is that? How in the world are we supposed to know what is going on? Nothing makes no sense. I did. It's not making any sense at all. Relentless. The Grays are saying we're in compliance. We're paying everything. What y'all talking about? An oral contract. They're saying there's an oral lease, an oral contract. You ain't done right. Plus, there are also some outstanding things that you have done wrong. They are saying that the carpenters are 
not properly communicating the truth. They have left some things improper. They are lying. And there's a little bit of racism involved in this as well. The carpenters are saying, no, it is not. We did not put you guys in a bad situation. We have been saving y'all even ever since you've been there. The $5,000 balloon payment thing, we refinanced that. The light bill, $17,000 behind, we have been paying that. They said, no, we paying everything, everything. The whole church, we are paying everything. Last Sunday announced, we're not going nowhere. We are here to stay. Allegedly, that's what they said he was saying. We are here to stay. We're not going anywhere. They're going to the courts and you have a hearing on the 31st and you got to get up out of the place. I don't care what you say. You're getting your whole hips up out of here and getting up out of our buildings. We come back here and get our church back right. We ain't going nowhere because we've been paying everything the whole time. And we know how y'all do stuff here in the city. They folk don't even want to work with y'all no more because y'all been here 20 something years, but the 20 something years of pain, according to some people, because y'all ain't been doing right. We doing real well over there in California paying everything off and y'all got people that y'all keep firing over to and over to again at y'all church. In fact, there's a new lawsuit about to come out because you fired Terry on today and there's some other things that got to be done. <sighs> Cheering. I'm, I said Terry, I meant Travis Hayes. Fired Travis Hayes. I mean, it's so much. Let me drink. <laughs> Oh, Lord have mercy. Let me say, hold on. Hold on. Look, I said it's fire Travis today. I was going off my, my memorization. Let me fix that. Let me fix that. I'm going to go to my notes. I'm going to my notes now. Okay, let me go to my notes. Travis Hayes is the former CFO that allegedly the Grays owe back pay thousands of dollars that John Gray allegedly did not pay him while he was employed by Relentless. Also, there is a, this is what I wrote down, Duke Power, $17,000 in rear, that redemption paid off. They said, it was said that Baby Jakes is paying the bills, but he paying, he's supposed to be paying all of the bills, but he's just paying the bills in relentless name and not the bills in redemption name. These are the bills that are unpaid and they are paying. But he's using the services of redemption and not paying the bills like his truck that he purchased in redemption name but he's not paying for it. a fleet of vehicles, office equipment, mortgage. Are you hearing that? The truck is delinquent for the third time that baby Jake's is driving, allegedly. The Denali. So, and it was purchased by Kevin R Whittaker. The last week of May 2018 was done as soon as he took over. And the carpenters left May 12. So, I have some paperwork that proves some of the story that I hear from both sides. And Larry Re Live, y'all know what I do, I get to the receptacles was proven, and I commentate on all of it. I don't choose anybody's side. Um, now, if you're an outlet and you want, to, and you you can do it, you can do the story and talk about whoever you believe. And I do do that, especially if there's 
And if there's no receipts and it's just all speculation and stories, I'm going to say what I think and what I believe and what I don't believe. Even with the receptacle, sometimes I do. But in this case, being that I had an opportunity in times past to, I'm going to say this. I believe there's truth to the story on both sides. This is what I think. And I think communication between Baby Jakes and Ronald by themselves, put them in a room and let them not leave until they, because they created this. Hopeful and the Avenger, they... Both of them can probably go live and tell stuff, what happened, cry, and get all of us to believe that their spouse is doing what's right. Come on now. You know that's true. But I don't think they know everything. I don't believe it. I don't believe these women know everything. I don't believe they know the the conversations that have been had by these two men. I don't believe that they know the conversations that have been had by their husbands and the men around them and this entire deal. I don't believe that. And this is what I'm going to say. Number one, I think we should pray for these ladies. I think we should have concern concerning these ladies. They got to manage, you know, the position that they're in, possibly kids, family, and all of that. That's number number one. And we've seen several times on this platform with women left, I mean, just in a bad space after putting up with all of this. I mean, this is on this platform, but you know how many pastors and, hus- and wives that have husbands out there and churches and businesses and they're the, the wife of CEOs and business owners, and they have to put up with all of what is happening and they don't even have a voice in it. And they don't even have all the information. So that's the first thing that I'm going to do is say pray for both of these women versus dragging them into the mess. You know, hopeful has some things to happen to her that everybody's dragging back up now. Things she said and things that she did. So that's a whole ordeal. And also Ronald as well. And of course, baby Jake's. Oh, my God. Really, the only person in all of this that don't have some kind of scandal is the Avenger that has came hasn't came out. I told y'all this, this is God by way of Marvel. Marvel by way of God has given unto you an Avenger. A pure agent of shield. So this is very interdone resting to me. So I'm going to continue to follow this story. I may do an update on this story on all on both sides and just focus on just this story, give you an update in the next seven days, just talking about this whole ordeal and information from both sides that we can compare, contrast, and talk about, okay? Would y'all like that? Let me look in the comments. Let me see what y'all want. The 830 of you on Facebook, I need all of you to hit like right now. On um, YouTube orations, there's 1,800 and something of y'all, and only 400 of you hit the, the like button. I need for all of you guys to hit the like button right now if you are watching. If you're watching. Would y'all like that? Okay, I'm saying yes, yes. I don't see no nose. Are you sending the nose? You pinned that comment. I can't see nothing. Oh, I can see it now. Um, you say you need to unpin it. For now? Why? Yes, 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 yes. Okay, so give me about a week. So give me about a week to to get this done and compile all of the information that we're going to talk about it here. There will be no bias. No bias. No bias. No bias. All right. Oh yeah. Y'all hit that hit that like. All right. Is that it now? All right, I'm down to the last part of the show. Oh.
Hallelujah. There are 1,920 of you on that is watching now. I need for all of you to hit the like over there on YouTube. On Facebook, there's 819 of you. I need for all of you to hit the like over there before I go forward. Um, there are, let me see who on Periscope. Periscope, y'all up over here. What's up? What's up? What's up? This is our storefront church over here. 65 of you over here. I need for y'all to be hitting all them emotions over there on the Periscope. Now, I see over there on Facebook, y'all hitting the emotion with a thumb up. I need for you to actually hit like on the post. That is up under the post. Maybe you need to go out of the live and then come find it, hit like, and come back in. Okay, yeah. That's what we need for you to do on Facebook. And then we need for you to do the very same thing over here on YouTube if you want me to go forward. Before I move forward, I want to see YouTube at 1,000 likes. Before I move forward with only what I, me, can tell you. I want to see 600 likes on Facebook. Then I'm going to move forward and tell you the story. I'm going to give you a little time to do that. Watch this advertisement, and I'll be right back to tell you about Skinty George Bloomer and the allegations. Be right back. Suffering in silence. Turning now to some tragic news. 30-year-old pastor of a megachurch in Southern California has died by suicide. The truth is that the strong have weakness. Two. We go to church like everything's okay. Smiling through addictions, pain, depression. I've seen people live in mixture. It's a scary thing when you see that. Who really knows how to hear the silent cry? I feel like I'm going to church to lie. I'm going to church to lie. Man or woman of God, you are not alone. Register for the One Day Breaking the Silence Conference. February 8th at Life in Richmond Ministries, 4644 Campbellton Road, Southwest in Atlanta. Hear from Pastor Dennis Martin, Bishop Quincy Carswell, Pastor Daryl Winston, Pastor Liza Hickman, Pastor Quincy Carswell II, and more. Topics include drug addiction, divorce, how to cope with losing it all, ministry and family life balance, and so much more. Registration is only $30. It's so the Breaking the Silence One Day Conference, February 8, 10 a.m. at Life in Richmond Ministries. Register today at dlmartin.org. I first told you guys about this whole addictions, pain, and thing that they're doing here in Atlanta last show. Since then, one of the speakers up here, Bishop Carswell, I think is proper. I'm saying it right. He has passed, just died. And so want to say condolences to him, to his church, and to his family. He is has passed and he is deceased. I'm pretty sure the funeral will be planned really quickly. He would no longer be a part of what's going on here. I'm going to tell you, folk is getting up out of here. The end of, of last year and the beginning of this year, I mean, one after the next. Oh, my God, I tell you the truth. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started with my going. I'm going to go ahead and tell you all about this here. Now, let me reload and see how many that have done. Now, look, YouTube, all of you have not hit the like. What you doing? What you doing? Let's see what Facebook, you, Facebook done did. Facebook, you about 70 people away from hitting the like. YouTube, I, I told y'all 1,000 because there almost 2,000 of y'all over there. Y'all y'all about 200 people away. So let me sit right here. Let me know when the lights get what they need to get. I ain't even ask the people for no money. And they know I got this lawyer stuff. The least they can do is hit a like and sure. Did you hit like? I ain't saying nothing. Did you hit like? I ain't got nothing to say until you hit the like. All right, YouTube, I, I, you better come on. I ain't saying nothing. Let me do something else. One thing, that's something I can do. Let me see. All right, Facebook, you're 25 people away. YouTube, you still got a 150 to go. Let me sit right here. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Six, four, one. Mm. Okay, Facebook done did it. See, Facebook think that they the mega church, but I told them YouTube is the mega church. Because, see, YouTube, YouTube, 
maybe always double the amount of people over there when we live. But that Facebook, one thing I can say, they going to interact. Yeah, they be into that. They don't beat y'all. All right. Y'all got 98 more to hit over there on YouTube. We got to get to a thousand. We got to get to a thousand. They ain't saying nothing. They ain't saying nothing. Huh? Because, you know, you only get the truth here when it comes to, come to uh, these stories like this because I got the inside scoop. Well, I must say Conscious TV is really good. So he number two. Cause his funeral was Saturday. That's a lie. Mm -mm, he didn't die on Sunday. That, whoever said that is a liar. <laughs> That's why you can't be in them comments listening to the 40 folk to be saying mess. He just died yesterday. How his funeral the day before? Although I have seen some folk that look like their funeral was the day before, but they walking around here looking like they did. I'm like, what? You, you look a mess. TB show your funeral was yesterday. Why is you here? Okay. All right, YouTube, you got 40 more. Oh, I ain't saying a thing. No, I ain't, no, I ain't, no, I ain't. All right, it's time. For the Facebook is already there. So I'm going to go ahead and do it for Facebook. Facebook done pull y'all up out. Okay, you two, you moving now. Come on. You two, you about 30 people from being at 1,000 likes. And Facebook, what I tell them, 600? And they at 626. They still going up. Facebook going to try to beat. They're going to probably try to. They can't beat YouTube likes because they ain't 1,000 of them on. There's only 830 of them on. So they ain't no... But, if they get to 100% people that don't hit that like, I'm going to have to give away some money over there if they do that. Uh, Y'all say I look younger without my glasses. I understand. I'm going to tell you what I did the other day. I went and I got a new pair of spectacles. They got my medicine and everything in them, and I picked them up before Monday. So by Monday next week, they see these glasses is really thick, and they're really heavy. But these, the ones I got are much thinner and smaller, and they're still a dark color, but they're not black. And so um, I'll be wearing them um, really soon. Look for that really, really soon. And I'll probably do a photo shoot, but I, I don't want to do a photo shoot right now because I'm bigger than I've ever been in my whole life. I'm just big. 6'2", 230 pounds. That's a lot of man. It's a lot of man. It's a whole lot of man. whole lot of man. But I'm going to lose, uh, get back down to my, my resting weight is 219. But Thanksgiving and Christmas, them two side by side like that, and everything were good. I ate and I ate. I know I won't do it right. I was eating. I said, this is going to be a mess. I ain't going to get this off. But starting tonight, today, I started going back to my old eating pattern. It used to be where I eat my last meal at 3 p.m. and just nibble the rest of the night. But now I'm doing my last meal before 7 if I'm nibble, it got to be like fruit or something or some nuts, and I go to bed. And um, I just got to change my habit. And I wasn't eating any red meat, no sodas, no juice. I got to get back to that kind of lifestyle, um, especially being there's some things I'm going to be coming up I got to do. And I don't want to be the fattest person on set. Mm -mm, not happening. All right, it's time to this darn discuss the allegations. Some of you watching me talking about what allegations are you talking about? Well, I'm going to talk about all of the allegations, then end in the most recent allegations surrounding Skinty George Bloomers. Now, we first heard about allegations concerning George Bloomer. If you live in North Carolina, you have heard all kind of rumors concerning Bethel, his church over there. I mean, because they've been doing it and doing it big in the city for a long time. I'm originally from North Carolina. And my former wife family go to his church. So all of my relationship with my former wife, we're talking 20-something odd years, I've always known about George Bloomer and the Bethel churches right there in Durham, North Carolina. John P. Key, Shirley Caesar, all of us is in there. And I'm saying us, yes, I'm putting me on their level because I'm just as known. What? So anyway, so, so I know about this mine. And I know about some of the rumors up out of the church. 
So I'm not going to bring those rumors to the forefront, but I just might. But anyway, <laughs> the first rumor we heard about was when his boss, and I'm saying boss because that's what he called himself. He's the owner of the Word Network. When he began to develop some kind of art with George Bloomer. And this art was the result of the glow up of George Bloomer. He was only on the network about three times, like January, May, and in September. He was on the show to do what he do. There's a show up there called Rejoice in the Word. Now, for those of you that are watching that do not know what the word network is, let me tell you what the word network is. What the word network is is a black network owned by a white man all this long time. Everybody thought was owned by a black man until all this ordeal broke off last October, that last October, November. In the darn way. Now, George Bloom has always been the type man to do things and say things that nobody really was used to a preacher doing or saying. Let me give you the backdrop. George Blumer, keep both of them up there because I'm going to jump between both of them. He hit the jackpot when he found George Bloomer to be the house nigger or the black face by which he get black money into this network. He hit the jackpot. Now, Rejoice in the Word, word is really like a replica of a show that was on another network called TCT. The name of that show was Rejoice, and that show was started on TCT, and the face of that was a black face. His name was Bishop Greg Davis. I forgot to tell you put this picture in here. Bishop Greg Davis. Well, Bishop Greg Davis came over to the Word Network and then sort of coined the show Rejoice in the Word. Okay, we're doing pretty good. But, but then, uh-uh. But then Adele, Kevin Adele found... George Bloomer to hit get in that spot. And when he did, it blew up and rejoiced in the word in the black community. The black urban community became a staple and it became like a go-to. If you are on the glow up and you are a gospel artist or you are a gospel preacher, you want to get on Rejoice in the Word or sometimes even Lexi Allen's show that she had at the time because both of these shows were the biggest shows and was like the best thing to be on. It was almost like being on the Stella Award program or the Celebration of Gospel. There was coveted stages for gospel artists and for gospel preachers. In fact, you want even all that unless you get on those stages. Now, ain't none of the stages I just named that important, truth be told, because they let anybody up there to pay the money or what have you. There ain't none of them stages I've just named that important no more when it comes to you being the who's who. Now you got social media. You can build your own platform and bypass all these stages, and these stages will be trying to pay you to come on it because you got a name. And, yes, I'm talking about myself. All right, so... so And some of you out there do. Uh-huh. Yeah, they're trying to get you on it so they can have a glow up on with your name. That's why George Bloomer had me on that show in 2018. He was a smart mind. Because everybody was talking about me, thought I was crazy and pulled and turned the church up and didn't know what I was doing until I got on his show and he asked me and I explained it about, oh, so he really ain't, he ain't doing nothing bad. It's just that we do stuff bad and then he make our bad known to the world. Mm -hmm. And you remember when George Bloomers tried to be smart with me on that show? Tell me, I know how to put you out of business. Now, at that moment, in that sliver of a moment, I was about to rip George Bloomer a new one right there in front of his own audience. I was about to make the ratings go through the roof. I was smiling, though. I, was just, I had all my black leather, my chain, my whole brand was going on. It's even on my page. I was really nice. I was smiling because I ain't no nigga. I just know him from, you know, being in North Carolina, but I ain't know him, know him. Ran to a couple times professionally because I got the singing thing. And so the people that booked his show was, would get me, you know, because they want to have people up there that, that have a following. They were trying to get them numbers so they can get that black money out y'all pockets. You know, so I said, okay, this is going to be it. I come here to be nice and be really saved. I'm paper Bible say, although I look like the world and maybe talk a little to say some stuff that is, you know, ragged and ratchet, but I am absolutely paper Bible saved. And he don't even know that this comment that he's making is about to make him famous. 
Mm -hmm. About to make him famous. And he said, I know how to shut you down. I said, oh, do you? How was that? He said, everybody stop doing what they're doing. You won't have nothing to talk about. I said, well, I said, you right. I said to myself, nigga, you don't even know. You just say your whole life. I hope you didn't try and get me up here and try to get cool points with all your friends in the industry because you about to be embarrassed. And isn't it funny now? I was the one. Let me tell you how God got a sense of humor. I, this platform was the one. To break the story that Kevin Adele was spreading a lie that he was stealing thousands of dollars from the Word Network, allegedly Kevin Adele was spreading the lie that he was stealing thousands of dollars from the Word Network and all these other accusations of sexual improprieties with women and now th the one with this dude. I was like, what? I said, this now there's some things we know about John P. Key, Bloomer, Shirley, anybody from um, that area that blew up. We know the rumors. This ain't one of the rumors. This is not one, you know, the rumors always got a little truth in it. This ain't one of the rumors. Ain't none of this none of the rumors. Ain't never no rumor about George Bloomer and no little boys. Ain't never no rumor about George stealing anybody money. There won't never no rumors concerning George messing with the women. Well, hold on for a minute. Let me just leave that room out. Because that is one. You know, after his after that divorce that that ping got lost and just the pussies all around the around world. We're, we're, okay, anyway. So let me get back to do this right. Let's we'll get back to the story. Now, so when I heard, now I did not know that. Any of these allegations will get that big, but when it did, the first one that got big, or well, first one, the first one that spilled out was concerning this little boy. Now, listen, I'm saying the term little boy, but we find out now this is about a 20-year-old man. It's supposed to happen when he's about 20 years old. This boy saying something about George Bloomer doesn't bother him. Now, what I did, oh, that's a nice silhouette. Now, what I did not know is that this will come up later on. But I remember hearing some little rumblings about it. But I didn't think nothing, didn't think nothing like that was going to come out on that. I knew and heard the rumblings of that and the stealing the money from the World Network when I was sitting right there on the show in 2018. And he was talking about I know how to shut you down. I knew all of that then. Y'all, yeah, I'm being very transparent and forthcoming. Yeah, but y'all know I be knowing stuff and I hold it and sit on it until there's some proof. I knew that then, but this is just a rumor. There was, it was not leaked out, so I can't, I won't, my, put my disclaimer up. Let me read my disclaimer right quick. Make everybody sure about this disclaimer. I want y'all to be clear. Everything on this platform originated as public information. We discuss it here after it becomes public somewhere else. Once it's public, I discuss it and I get to looking into it and no one is exempt. If you or yours put it out, then I will commentate on it and there's nothing you can do about it. Nobody is off limits. But it first has to be public at some level. So I already know about this, but it won't public information because I so I ain't gonna talk about it. Cause what I do understand now that if I talk about it, it's gonna blow it up. So I'm I'm being careful and being conscious at the same time. So then I invite somebody on my show I'm covering. I get hired to do the prophetic college. You know, you didn't know nothing about what the prophetic college was or the college of prophets. It was LRL that made it become a household in the community. We're talking about far as the community is concerned, name. Nobody knew it existed. And let me say this to all of you that are entrepreneurs and business owners and y'all doing church business. When it comes to the church world and the church market, I have cornered it in social media. You are absolutely stupid and dumb. If you have something going on and you don't contact me to get a spot up here to expose what you're doing to your community, it's dumb. But these folk were not dummies. Because they had heard about my work, especially when it came to the Lady Brown situation. That's how I even came into the relationship, started coming into relationship with Jordan and Bloomer because of that story. <clears throat> so they start doing the School of Prophets top of 2019. Mind you, 
in 18, I already been on the word network. Um, I had already done the, I done the lady Brown thing in August, met Jordan in September. They had the thing with the prophets. It was college of prophets. Then in October, I met, um, Jordan in October. And then two weeks later, went to Greensboro, I met Bloomer. And so that's when I started getting to know them. And then Bloomer booked me November. I was on the word network. Is that right? That timeline, right? right. November. Then they go into the main school of prophets first of 2019. Mind you, I already know there's, there's rumors I had already heard. And it's in the back of my mind. I mean, I had all the rumors in the back of my mind. Somewhere between there, I think the, the top of 19, I embraced Jordan. I got a new, I met his wife. Remember I told you that story? I met his wife. And that sort of put the nail in the coffin. I embraced him as a mentor. He understood what I was doing. And I knew everybody was saying he was a witch. He's stealing money, all this kind of stuff. But that ain't what I got from them and been around them. So I embraced him as a mentor. <clears throat> but I was very clear. And I told him, I said, look, I embrace you as a mentor. But if something come out on you, I'm doing your story. <laughs> and I'm so glad people that I meet now understand that this is my job. So if your story come out, I'm going to do your story and say it on the platform what I think about it. If you cannot handle that, then we can't be friends. I had to tell Juanita Biden that. So well, my friends wouldn't, wouldn't do what you're doing. I said, well, then I'm not pressed to be your friend. Enjoy your life. Goodbye. <laughs> what did Kim Barrell say? Uh, I wish you the best. <laughs> Fine. We can't do that. And can you imagine if I, we have became friends, if I was hard up for friendship, if I had said, okay, well, I, I would just, you know, I want to do it. And then the John Moore thing happened. So that's why you got to have integrity. And you can't be so friends with nobody to where you won't tell what you believe to be the truth or your point of view. You just keep it straight up. And I ain't going to be connected to nobody like that. Nobody. Anyway. And so, <clears throat> and I understand why Wendy Williams, all these years, she said she didn't, she stayed out of those relationships because she didn't want no relationship. And, but I saw her through this transition with her husband begin to now create friendships right there in her job with the DJ booth and some of the rest of them. And now other people that are reality stars. And she says she had to have the conversation with them. This is my job because what Wendy does TMZ, Breakfast Club, these other outlets, The View, they discuss what is public pretty much as well. Although sometimes, you know, like page six, they'll get into what has not been discovered and bring that out. But I won't ever do that. And so, not without you being public first. <clears throat> so I had that conversation with them. So then we get... April comes. I'm doing the. I'm in the heat of the advertisement for the prophetic. Ninety audience. seconds. Yeah. If you're gonna call in, better go ahead and call in, cause you got ninety seconds. Put the number up, cause the line gonna shut down, and I only be able to answer whoever's in in the call log. So call six four six seven eight seven eighty one seventy four six four six seven eight seven eighty one seventy four. All right, get back to the story. So then. I had a guest. It's a prophet here in Atlanta. We talked about the prophetic. 60 seconds. That was my part one. My, then a part two, talking about the prophetic. False prophets, I think, actually. I had a guest up here. Now, the guest had told me prior that there's going to be a call that is going to come in that is going to rock the show. I'm, I'm not saying the words right. I can't remember what they said. But they basically alluded that this is going to be something great. And they may have even told me that it had something to do with somebody on one of them flyers. Because mind you, I was putting up the flyers every time I was advertising. They were adding people to this flyer. I mean, by the droves. So where it was four different versions of flyers for the same event. And so every flyer had different faces on it. And so this particular night, I think the part one, I put up all four flyers when the prophet from... I was with the prophet here that was in the city. Ten seconds. And then part two, I did the same thing. Now, someone called in, and you can go back and watch this show. I think it's April the 13th. Is that right? April the 13th is on my YouTube page. It's not on my Facebook page. It's on my YouTube page for April the 13th. 
And this caller began to tell this very salacious, salacious story. Now, y'all know we like a good story over here, good or salacious or whatever it is. We just like a story. Lord have mercy. Jesus went to start telling this story and tell my, and he walked out with his underwear on. And, and I'm, wow, wow. If you go to my IG, there's a clip of me reacting to that part <laughs> of the story. And so at this moment, I'm listening to the story. I'm fully reacting. I'm telling everybody knows you call into my show. You can tell whatever story you want to tell if you're not using names. I don't care what the story is you tell if you're not if you're not using names. But if I'm talking about the person, you can call in and say whatever you want to say. If, I'm, if the person's in the news, you can tell your experience. I don't care. That's fine. Now, if you call in my show and you start telling names, there's going to be a problem. This was April the 14th when I done that live show. I said, there's going to be a problem. And so, <laughs> it was April the 13th. What did I say, the 14th? It's the 13th. It was the 13th. And so I done that on the 13th. So then, in telling this story, he says this female pastor's name while he's telling the story about whoever's on this flyer. Now we know it's Skinty George Bloomer, but at the time, we didn't know who it was. Everybody was in the comments speculating because there was a whole bunch of yellow folk up there. He said there was yellow and light skin. You know, it was going on and on. So when he done that, I said, oh, hang up. Hang up, hang up, and hung up on him. Because he won't fall in directions. So in my mind, I'm already thinking, Lord, I think this is Skinty George Bloomers because this is the rumor that I heard last year before I went on the Word Network because I was contacted. And told, that's how messy people is. God bless the mess, though. Oh, um, <laughs> no. I'd already heard about this before I went to sit in front of him. So this was already in my mind. So now I'm thinking, oh, oh, this is this thing coming up. And I think, oh, my God, this is what it is. But I was not sure. But it did cross my mind. So the guy that was calling in, I allegedly had some kind of relationship with the guest that was on my show. So I mentioned to the, to the guest, because they, they were here in the studio after it was over. I said, you know, he needs to call me. I think I put it in text, texting him or on the phone call. I said, I said on the show for him to call me. Tell him to call me. Let me find out what's going on. And it took a day passed, then another day passed, and some of you guys were contacting me. Well, what happened? Who was the person? Who was the person talking about? I still hadn't heard until the next day. In fact, I heard from my guest who he was talking about. I still hadn't talked to him. What I did not know is that there was some problems in the communicating of my information. So about two days later, I made this post. And this post was on the 15th. This post said this, and here it is. It said, I have heard from the caller from Saturday Night Show. However, I, th oh, I meant I never heard from the caller from Saturday Night Show. However, he's in contact with my guests. I was told who the caller was implicated. I spoke with that person as I said I would. Findings were inconclusive. It was certainly about to be a whole entire show had it been otherwise. But I won't participate, listen to me, in he said, she said, and carry go bring come. That's a Jamaican term. Carry go bring come. With no darn receipts. Technically, in this field, I could. No, because people do it all the time. But that ain't how I am doing this. So now I already knew with a story like this that was 30, almost 30 years old, receipts, when I say receipts, it's not in the form of text messages, videos, or pictures, because I knew that wasn't possible. But this is what I know. If a person is committing a rape or sex crime, like has been alleged here, this is not a one offer. Every predator, every person that is authentically a criminal, they will do it more than once. It, even if they're, if it's murder, they're going to do it more than once. There, there ain't no such thing as no one offer. So what I begin to do at this time, 
By the time of this post, I had already contacted Skinty George Bloomer. Fair, fair, let me tell you how that went. Because I have been doing the, the advertising for the Prophetic College. And I had told Bernard Jordan, I said, listen to me. The moment I start putting up these flyers, everything that anybody ever done, they're going to contact me. And so this is like the fourth time I had called Jordan to tell him somebody on the flyer, they, 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 they bought, it's coming out. It's in my inbox. So this was not an unfamiliar phone call. So I made that phone call not even 24 hours after the show once my guest told me who it was. Mind you, I still hadn't talked to who I have nicknamed The Jit. Mm -mm. Not calling their name because I'm still standing by my standards for putting a story out. I will not put a story out and bring a question mark over somebody's head and I can't legitimize it. I'm not going to sleep with that. That has absolutely not happened. But because this has been talked about, particularly because it was talked about by Conscious TV, the way that he did it, and you should go and watch that because I'm not going to go into all those details. I'm just telling you from my standpoint. Go and watch Conscious TV. That's what, where you put the S, put the Z. Conscious TV and watch that before you go to bed tonight or watch it in the morning to get all the details because I'm not going into it like that. Now, I contacted Jordan. You should have had Jordan a um, picture, but it's all right. He isn't putting him in there. I contacted Bernard Jordan. Come on, you know, I knew the whole reason and how the prophetic college started, and it basically was Bloomer's idea. He contacted Bernard to really take it to the next level because he's the most most trusted name in prophecy. And I said, I said, y'all got another problem, Larry? What is it? I said there is. Somebody else that's saying something about somebody this time is Skinty George Bloomer. Oh, God, I told these leaders that they must deal with everything in their life because we're going into a season where God is going to expose your flaws and all. And you must be able to look eyeball to eyeball with the flaws and deal with that thing. And then God can use it. Now, this spirit's a deep stuff. I'm like, <laughs> What are we going to do about this? You're doing too much. Just tell me. What are we going to do about this here? Let's call him, Larry. Let's call him. So we get on the phone. We have a conversation. And he starts to tell us this whole story that sound like a rumor I heard from being in NC. And somewhere, like, uh, listen, this talk went on for about 10 minutes. And 10 minutes in, I said, wait a minute, Bloomer. That's a whole nother you don't, you don't, this is something else. So then I start telling him what I heard live on my show from the picking up, the land across the bed, to you bending your tidy whities to you sodomizing his mouth. And they said your peen didn't go to the back of the throat. And yes, I did ask him live on the show. This is my natural thought. Did you come? Did he come in, in the mouth? I'm like, I'm thinking, I'm just, it was just my natural second thought. I don't know why. And it's just, I'm just, uh, I don't know. But now, I'm thinking back and saying, <laughs> you should have went on with a line of question. You probably would have uncovered that this is some bullshit. Because that's what I think it is. I think just like some of them preachers be doing, this is a bunch of bullshit. Because it just don't line up. Let me tell you the story. Let me tell you why. Listen, critically. All right. So then eventually, so at the same time, I'm texting the JIT. And I'm telling the JIT, he don't have a clue what I'm talking about. Don't know who you are, because I told him first and last name. Don't know. Give me a picture. If I won't doing that, texting that to him, I was on Facebook pulling a picture. But anyway, I got a picture. And when I got a picture, I sent it to his other phone. I said, here, this is the picture. Look at your other phone. And his whole voice changed. He said, oh. I remember that. I beat his ass. <laughs> it shouldn't be funny, but for me, and y'all seen this on the show when somebody call in and they start using cuss words a certain kind of way, it tickles my soul. 
And the way that skin tip Lord George Bloom was cussing, he tell y'all that. I'm gonna tell you, now see, this is one thing I can say about the George Bloom is that we know all his business. We know he's illiterate. That he just learned how to read in the in while he was in the 30s. That he had a ninth grade education. That he was molested by his aunt and his boyfriend out of his book, The Little Boy and Me. This is stuff we've been knowing long before he even done the witchcraft and the pews that really blew him up. We knew about him being a drug addict and also about him being a drug addict while he was preaching, getting high before he preached the word of the Lord. And we know that he cusses. Now, he says it's not called cussing. He, if you go to one of his meetings and stuff, he'll tell you, he said, I use profanity. <laughs> I forget what the explanation is, but you cuss. But I don't cuss on this show because folk can't take that, so I don't do that. Okay, so I don't really cuss in my personal life, but I, I, I will. I'm not saying I don't, but I will. If, the, if it calls for it, I will. Some stuff got to be cussed out as you talk it out. Amen, amen. Some folk don't understand nice talk. You got to get down there in the gutter with them and cuss so they can get it. No, I, I, I would not like to, um, I don't want to speak with you anymore. And Well, but uh, why don't I know I don't want to speak with you anymore? I'm, I'm fine. I'm good. But I don't understand. Fuck you. Then they get it. All right, talk to you later. Goodbye. Talk to you no more. <laughs> Some stuff you gotta use a gun. But that's just not what I choose. I feel like I got too many degrees, five degrees. I got too many degrees to not know another word to use size a cuss word. And maybe that's the difference between me and Skinty George Bloom is because he ain't got all them degrees and he just learned how to read in his 30s. That is serious. And then he got a, a New York best sellers test. Very interesting. But anyway, so we already know all of this stuff. Man. So Bishop Jordan required, and this is key, and I'm going to tell it. He required the board of directors for the prophetic college to tell all of their business. <laughs> he said, any scandal, any situation that you think might can come up, share it. And I think it's a practice from his his group of prophets. We must know how to deal with whatever is going to come because God is causing the voice of the prophet to rise. And with that, we're going to have to bring correction to the church. But we can't bring correction to the church if you got stuff that is undealt with and you have not faced your flaw. And there are people that you have not given their dignity back. He said, if it's a woman, if it's a man you slept with or what have, whatever, you need to make sure that you got that right, that they are complete, that they do not have anything in their heart towards you. You got to clean your hands. See, a lot of people don't know. Joe, I'm going to get on your last nerve trying to bring you to integrity. But it is what it is, thank God, anyway. And so all of this kind of stuff was going on. And I was attending all of that and seeing what was happening. You know, because I I wanted I told them I can't be advertising for y'all, and then I think y'all is is about the bullshit. So you gonna have to let me in and see what's up, if you want me to do this. You know, so that's how it was. And then I later connected myself with that. And so anyway, <clears throat> so on this phone call now he realized oh I be this, and he's going through the strange. And I said now you need to talk to to this guy. Come mind you, hold on, I don't think that's what I said then. That's not what I said. We just had a discussion about that. Because at this time, I still had not talked to the one that is accusing him. It had been two days. So I showed you the post that I have, have made. Even at the time of that post, I hadn't talked to them. So eventually, I talked to him. Now, let me tell you what happened. It was a series of phone calls back and forward. Now, in these phone calls, it was phone calls between me and him. Well, the first thing I did, I said, look, I've contacted who you said was your accuser. Because um, by this time, hold on, hold on, hold on. That's not right. That's right. I'm out of order. I'm out of order. That's not right. When I went to Jordan and talked to Bloomer, 
when I made that post, put the post back up, let me read it. Had I already talked to him yet? I never heard from the caller. Yeah, that's right. That's right, yeah. I hadn't, I hadn't heard from him yet. So two days and I went by, I hadn't heard from him. But eventually I got into contact where actually he got, the accuser got into contact with me. So when he did, I told him, well, I already done contacted Bloomer. He has his own story. At that time, I didn't really get into the whole story, Bloomer story, but I just knew at this moment that what I was saying to him as far as sodomize, the boy saying he sodomized his mouth, that he was like, that's some bull. That ain't true. That ain't happened. I don't know what that is, but I did beat. So, <laughs> we said I did beat his ass. You know, so I already knew in my mind when I'm going into this interview with this guy, I don't know how this is going to work because these stories are not lining up. But I want his story because I wanted to use his story. And this is what I said to him. I want to use his story too. And, the, and if you heard the interview, it was in Conscious TV Patreon. God gave it to him. I said to him that I want to use your story for two things. There are people that have been raped and molested by leadership as young children, not as 19, 20 year olds like you saying, but if that possibly could have happened, I don't know, you know, with somebody else. But I want to tell that story. And the main thing is because the church system, in my opinion, failed you if you're telling everybody in your community that you have been raped and nobody was there with you, and mainly your pastor. And so that was how the conversation went. So I recorded it and I was going to air that. I had every intent, every intent to air it. But go back to what I said before I talked to him. Put that up. Yeah. I said, findings. He's in contact with my guest. I was told who the caller was implicating. I spoke with that person. As I said, I will find this were inconclusive. So that me let you know that their stories didn't line up. Now, I still hadn't talked to the accuser yet. It was certainly about to be a whole entire show had it been otherwise, but I won't participate in he said, she said, carry, go, bring, come, receipts, technicality in this field, you know, da, da, da. So I talked to him during the interview with him because I promised my guest that I would interview him. When I interviewed him, his story was so compelling going back to the Oprah thing that I mentioned before, because of what I had been through, something, some trauma or something in me connected with what he was saying, and I 100% believed what he said. Every part of me believed what he said. And I said, oh my God, this is horrendous. This is terrible. And he made some lighthearted talk about, about it, talking about how small... Um, George's peen was and all that kind of stuff. And of course, you know, I'm going to cut up, so I left and talk as well. And so I hung up with that, and now at this time, I'm going back to Jordan, back to Bloomer, and I'm in a different energy this time. Now the energy I'm in is, nigga, you done did this. <laughs> I said, and he said, no, I didn't. I said, no, I said, if you, if you didn't do that and you didn't commit a sexual crime, at least y'all fraud. I said, I, yes, you did. I said, yes, you did. Read. I am not, I have not done that. And Jordan is on the phone. You know, Boomer, you know, you can be honest with us. <laughs> you need to get complete. You need to clear this. So I'm telling Boom. I said, okay. Now, at the same time, I'm going back. I'm talking to which I heard some audio that had to be manipulated. I'm 100% manipulated because I never spoke with that I recall. If I did, I don't recall. Oh, yes, I did. I don't remember for long protracted periods of time talking to the accuser on the phone alone. There was always a third party. I know our longest two conversations. One was the interview and the other ones were the third party, which was the guest that was on my show. They were on the phone, but in the audio I heard, their voice wasn't even on it, but they were they were in the midst of all of this, Dylan. So, 
I remember having to work with him, trying to get him to have a conversation. Because at this time, somewhere in between there, I called the pastor's people that he came from. I called Shirley Caesar Camp. I started checking to try to get some, some, I needed something else because it was two opposite stories. And I said, I, I want to, although he wanted, now listen to this, this is key. Although he wanted to do the story with no names originally, he just wanted to tell his story. I knew that my audience, because of him calling in, I already knew they already was putting it on Bloomer. So in my mind, I'm saying, okay, now if I'm going to do this, I got to do this with both of you guys because you're saying one thing, he's doing a, saying another thing. And I don't want to do your story and then it becomes what is used to authenticate something that happened 30 years ago when I know in my head there is Bloomer and then everybody else I check with who's saying you aren't credible, your story is not true, and that you're lying and you're adding to this story many years later because this never happened. So I was torn. But just like Oprah Winfrey did, I made a decision that either it's done like this with both of you guys or I'm not running it. I said, I'm not running this story. If it's not done with both of you guys, I'm not running it. Mm, I don't feel right. I'm just not doing it. And I couldn't understand why he wouldn't agree to that because you're still having your voice. And so then that was that. So what ended up happening, hold on, hold on. Before I came to that resolve, there was a space in there between there where they actually talked, where Skinty George Bloomer and the accuser, they actually talked. And when they actually talked, they did not share with me. I don't know who else they talked to, but from neither side, they shared with me what happened. They just told me, preacher talked like, we had a conversation, oh, it was great. It was really wonderful. I'm so glad that was able to happen. And George was saying, well, he said he's complete. You know, we just had talk and, you know, and we talked about this stuff. He said he never, he, this is what George said. I said to him that Jordan and Larry said to me that I molested you. And he said that, that the accuser said, no, I never said that. Why would somebody say that? Why would somebody say that? Now, I don't know if it's the uses of the word molest, because that ain't what I said. I said sodomize, because that's what he said, which is like rape. And he was just saying no to that because of, you know, or what. But I remember George telling me and Jordan that he never said anything about the accusation of sodomizing his mouth. And I was like, well, why would, why would he not do that? I said, I said well, are y'all good? Say, yeah, we good. He said it's complete. So then I heard from the accuser. And if he was recording everything like he said, this is on recording. He said to me, I'm okay. I did want to do the story. I think I need to heal first because this has brought up so much for me, the death of my mama, you know, what my former pastor did to me. I want to heal. You know, he asked me for my, um, anybody I knew that can do counseling, I sent him to my therapist because it helped me so much, but it didn't go to that. And he was telling me, you know, he really started telling me about what he wanted to do and, you know, as far as the counseling is concerned. And I said, well, you know, I support you in that. And I said, and George should support you in that as well. I said that through text, which later on I found out he thought that I was saying, George, go with him to therapy. Heck no, I was not saying that. I was saying that he should support you. I was talking money. Because I didn't know whether or not he had a, what kind of career he had or whatever. But I expect that, you know, this is something he should pay for, you know, or at least be willing to, to pay for. Because when I'm talking to him, I didn't want him to feel like that I didn't believe your story. And as a result of me not believing your story, I don't really care about you. Now, mind you, in the back of my mind, 
I'm already feeling like this story is not proper. But talking to him, I wanted to show that I was supportive and that I wasn't biased because he kept kept blaming me of being biased. I said, I'm not biased. I said, I just met these niggas. I said, this, y'all, I don't know what, I don't know how y'all operate. But this is a business. I take care of everything, my children, all of the expenses of the business through this. This means more to me than some nigga's relationship I just met. God bless you, George Bloomers, but hell, you gonna pay your bills. You're not gonna pay mine. I'm not thinking. I gotta think about me. So I was trying to get him to see. Ain't nobody that important in my life. Ain't no nobody. Nobody is that important in my life. I'm not biased, but he's. I guess he didn't believe it because I didn't want to do things the way he wanted me to do it. Because he still. Um, it's like he had a problem with me trying to get him to talk. But I didn't have, I didn't know nothing else to do. I feel like y'all needed to talk because y'all not coming together on y'all story and you feel like you're so stuck in your life. I think talking to him will help you get unstuck. So that I pushed I pushed and worked until I got both of them on the phone. He, he didn't want to get on the phone but was willing to after I said that he needed to. He didn't want to get on the phone but he was willing to after I said that he needed to. That was all Larry doing. That was me. Because this was confusing as hell to me. So in a darn way, my life went on for about another week. Maybe it was a week. Maybe have been two weeks. Maybe have been three weeks. But I'm going to say a week. And so they done talked. He said he's in therapy. He's going to wait, you know, to, you know, do his book, you know, to talk on the show later on. Because he needed to work through some things. Because they pulled up a lot of emotions. I said, okay, okay, fine. That's, that's fine. So then, this is what happens. I see this post up under the same post that I made. And it was from him. And you can see how many weeks ago, bring it over. You can see how many weeks ago it was. So count back and you'll see that it's probably like a week or two after he called into the show. So now this is after they done talking. I thought everything was good. He says, Larry Reed. Why haven't you told your followers that we did speak several times and when I first emailed you, I sent it to the wrong email address? I really think it's worth mentioning to your followers. I am no longer ashamed to talk about it publicly. I think it deserves a conversation. So I'm like, what? Last time I told you, you didn't want to talk. You need to go to counseling first, uh, first so you don't talk to George. Da, 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 da. Now, my, now, this is my reply right up under there. I didn't speak. Because other people were saying, why read, why read? I said, I didn't speak to this person until later. I didn't speak to the accused until later. I was told by my guest who he was referring to and later by the accuser. Meanwhile, I contacted the accused and brokered a phone convo. Last I heard from the accuser and the accused, things were in a healing space and reparative. I mentioned in following live shows what I am posting now. I referred to the accused, to my counselor, I mean the accuser, to my counselor and told the accused because they asked. There was no need for an interview or for the convo to be brought back to the platform. If now the accuser wants an additional interview or play the one we have done on the phone, then he can text me because he has direct contact with me, which is why I don't understand why I am reading this and this here instead of a phone call. And right when after I posted that, I turned right around and I text him. Those text messages are in Conscious TV Patreon. I don't have the link to his Patreon, but if he's in this chat and he put it in there, the folk be signed up trying to read that. And you'll see the whole exchange. When I said, why is you texting, you want the interview now? And in that same text exchange, he basically says, no, I don't. So I'm, because I said, I'm going to put a picture up, tell your story, da, 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 da. And he's like, I don't want you to do it. So I'm confused. I'm saying, okay, now, not only is this boy making up a story, now he's showing me that he got some other mental issue going on because he flip-flopping. One minute you don't want to do an interview, next minute you don't want to talk. So at this point, this is where I came up with, at this point, I'm trying to do the timeline. 
where I came up, okay, let me get both of them on the show because now he wants to do an interview. So at this point, now I'm going back to Jordan and to Bloomer and trying to get, you know, see if we can do an interview. And and Bloomer's like, I thought this was done. If that's what they want, yes, let's do an interview. I said, you can sit on one side. He's going to sit on the other side. But then when I went back to him about it, he didn't want to do it like that. And I think that audio was out there too. But all of these audios just chopped up. Ain't none of this in the proper narrative. It's spinned to support the accuser's narrative. Listen to them. I get on the phone and my guest that was on that night was on the phone. And I'm saying, you know, this is what they want to do. I said, well, he wants to do the interview. How are you, how are you? He said, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Go 10 miles back. Or you, you mean to tell me you want to do an interview? With, we in the same room on the same show. I've already been in a room with him before. I said, okay. Now, anybody that know me and know me personally, you know, ain't nobody going to tell me what to do. And if you do it two or three times, then you're going to end up with a whole problem. So on this phone call, then he says, no, we're not going to do that. What you mean, no, we're not going to? This is Larry Reed live. Your name ain't nowhere in this show. I make the decisions when it comes to this platform. What you talking about this ain't more? So I was getting pissed. <laughs> Actually, I was getting irritated. I get irritated before I get pissed. You was just getting on my nerves like a, like a gnat. No, we're not doing that. And then it begins to say, almost like, well, if you don't do it, somebody else will because I'm well connected. Because he mentioned something about doing a book, and I said that, Bloomer does book deals and what what have you. And he was saying, you want me to go to the person that done this to me to get a book deal? I'm And see, all of this is flooring to me because none of this is the language that he had when I last talked to him. The post and this conversation is all like, what is going on? This is, now you in this space, you weren't even in this space when I first talked. You didn't even want to do an interview saying his name. So I think somebody got in his ear and just pumped him up and really put him in a space that now got him in a place to where now he's going to have to be in the courts. Him and all the vloggers he went to that went and reported stuff not using the legend and reported it as the truth and it was a crime like this. Y'all, mm, y'all better get y'all some GoFundMe's. <laughs> y'all can't fight with these pockets. This, 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 you have, y'all had committed some serious crime. So somebody pumped this guy head up and he's in this whole, thing. so on this phone call, I'm irritated. And I'm saying, and I said, and it, it may sound insensitive, but I meant every word I said I'm not apologizing for. I said to him, I said, look. Because he's talking about he opened up, he's talking about um, Bloomer sodomized his mouth. I said, nigga, I said, open up your mouth again for Bloomer and get a book deal. That's, I know it sounds insensitive, but this, this, what you see here in this chair, this is me. I'm not in a counseling relationship with this dude. At this moment, he's on my last nerve. And there was so much laughter in there coming from my guest who was on the phone. I don't know how he took all of that out of that audio because it was lots of laughter, you know, because I am funny. You know, so what I'm saying, I'm saying they're dying laughing. And I'm saying, you know, then he's saying something like, um, um, can I say open up your mouth and get the book deal? And then he's really going on this tangent, you know, I've been through, I've been um, done a certain kind of way. I, I said, nigga, I've been molested and I've been raped. You ain't the only person on this phone this has happened to. You're giving me too much. You really acting like a bitch. Now, if the tape cuts off, but I don't know why they didn't play the whole thing because everything's in context because everybody was laughing and even he was laughing. But they put it out, out there like I was being some cold person when everybody was laughing on the phone. But I was meaning what I was saying because you was getting on my nerves. So about this conversation, I think this is when I introduced it need to be both of you on the show because these are two polar opposite stories. There's no supporting receipts for either one of you's story. 
so both of y'all just can have to tell y'all at the same time. Because I don't want nobody to look back at my platform and poke holes in any story I've done. That's not good for my platform. So both of y'all going to come. I didn't hear nothing else out of them concerning this from April of last year until it showed up with these other very small, un no credibility, wanna be lying, no receipt having, wanna be LRL platforms. And I saw, I said, hold on, this, I, I'm at that moment, I'm saying, I'm so glad I didn't work with some of them or help them there because they didn't got sense to ask the other side of the story. That's, that's, you're supposed to do, that's just fair media. Y'all just taking stuff and doing all kind of crazy, man. And then they hijacked the accuser's story to take a whole nother direction to where now the accuser's story is now so dirty and, and has so much dark energy around it. And it had, it itself, the story itself, let's suppose it was true, now it has been molested and raped itself to where it's just horrible it's just gossip negative hogwash and more lies on top of lies that has brought a whole lot of other people just a whole bunch of lies just crazy man and i was so glad that conscious tv picked up this story i mean and it's like he was there from the very beginning I mean, he don't know what I know, but, and he was able to see through all of the bull. I didn't even find out some stuff that I don't have the receipt for, which is something that really debunks the story that the accused have been saying from the beginning as relates to the anatomy of George Bloomers, which now has been totally debunked and does not measure up. Put the word network up there. This is what I found out. This is a pure shame. You know, it 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 all don't even be this this bad. What I found out, put both of them side by side. That employees, I'ma say minions of the word network owner Kevin Adele, allegedly are behind this huge but small (laughs) effort to cast Skinty George Bloomer, the LRL platform, and even Bishop Bishop Bernard Jordan in a negative light. Let me say it again. The word network and its owner, allegedly, they are the ones behind this big but small effort to cast a negative light on Skinty George Bloomers, Bernard Jordan, and the LRL brand. For it was these three entities that began to uncover the racism the money been handled improperly, the lies about the oil, about the talits, which is the prayer shawl, and all of the debauchery that has been done behind the scene at the Plantation Network. The boycotting, highly upset at WJ Ride Out and his teams at the Kojic Convention, at the Word Network studio there in Detroit, boycotting three and four times, police called and going back and forth. This is one big scheme, one big takedown that, listen to me and remember I said it, that will not work and will do nothing but increase the voice the authority and the reach 
of Bloomer, Jordan, and the LRL brand separately. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Because since they've been doing what they're doing the last month and a half, I done increased by 4,000 subscribers. I think it was one of my highest months. Let me tell every last one of y'all out there that are listening to me that got some enemies and got some people after you and people making up lies. Now, I can't do nothing with them telling the truth because that's, that's on you. But folk making up lies about you right in their face. And I'm going to give it hmm, eight months. Within an eight-month period, right in their face, they're going to have to see you blow up and glow up in such a way and they will have to sit and behold this as they are in the same state they are or were when they begin to lie on you. And you're going to advance, you're going to grow, and you're going to increase in the face of your enemy. Your enemy will be used as your footstool that may help you reach up to the place you couldn't reach prior to they started lying. Are you hearing what LRL is saying? So skin to George Bloomers, continue with your lawsuit that you have towards Kevin Adele. Mm -hmm, I know about that. Uh -huh. And continue your lawsuit that you have just started today against your accuser and everybody that joined in slandering your name across the internet. All right, I'm done. Let's take some calls. Oh, my God. I'm sorry, guys. But I ain't sorry because I'm, you know, I'm tired anyway. All right, I'm going to go live again this week. I got to, um, oh, the Just Mercy movie. One of the actors or one of the real life people behind the scene, I'm going to interview them. That's the plan. If they can work it in. Um, I'm going to be interviewing them. Make sure you go and see that movie. Take little piece of change. Go to the movie house. Watch this picture show. Sponsor somebody. The second week is extremely important. Make sure you go and support this injustice. Injustice is against black people, whether it comes from inside of our family or from the outside. We definitely have to stand against earmark and voice. And let me tell you, we need to stick together when it comes to our oppressor and that system and really stop throwing each other up under the bus and create all this havoc and hoopla Carigo bring come bonga bonga roundabout and within our communities. Let's get rid of that. Let's try to do this one thing together. Number one, let's go to this movie, support it, show Hollywood that we like seeing black heroes in our community instead of us fighting and shooting each other. Put that on the screen. And then I also want you, before you sign off, to support this platform. If you're a patron, I'm not talking to you, but those of you that watch all the time and don't never patronize, I'm asking you tonight, $12. If you enjoyed this show and you were entertained and you want to help what we're doing here, make sure you do a $12 donation right now, either through Cash App or go to the website, LarryReadLive.com. It's tax deductible. You're giving it to the MBN Network. Some of you are business owners and you need to do a charitable donation. So do it on the website. We can accept any form of donation. Thank you so much for tuning into Larry Live. Before you sign off, you hit that like and you share. Don't just watch me and use me and then don't help me out. So if you can't, you ain't got no money, you can click and you can share. You can do that. All right. Goodbye. See you later. Bye.
yeah. 